Hello all and welcome, I'm your not so humble game master TJ and this is Dice of Ages presenting Crestfall and the Argent Flame. Um, last we heard of our wayward interplanetary heroes, they were, well, they were in two different places. Zemdak abandoned in the not intentionally, abandoned in the Aetherveld Macroliths type vessel up on an unknown planetoid uh, with regolith uh, upon it. Uh, I almost said Noel, uh, and I almost said Macheni. Uh, 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 Trisheni, uh, now back in the kitchen with Eleazar and Log, where she explains what has happened. Uh, eventually, the rest of you two Meckel and Argus meet back up. You guys hasten to try to find a way back to Zemdek, eventually realizing that there might be another transportation ring within the manor itself. You go down to the wine cellar, you find a short range teleportation uh, to a, a, a anima gin style type laboratory with grafting and experimentations, but it's a, far, a little bit more grotesque and grim here. Uh, after a couple of difficulties and some creepy, creepy things that you thought were dead but then start to stalk you in the darkness, you eventually find some sort of uh, technological and magical fusion of pieces of well wall into this ring that is hooked up and tethered to these strange bodies of desiccated uh, that seem to have some way of powering it or something, you're not sure. Eventually, you do power this thing up, but not before the doctor appears last minute to pin Trisheni against the ring with a full dragon arm, damaging much of all of the equipment around here before you narrowly escape into the vacuum of space. Meanwhile, Zemdek is alone with the strange, powerful entity that Cole released in his own mind, now wearing his face and his skin. Zemdek believes that this is Cole, divulges a bunch of information only for this Cole to then try to get rid of Zemdek, uh, eliminate him or, or imprison him, we're not sure. Zemdek is able to escape and then hide behind the blasters of the core, but not before sacrificing his own little mimic buddy to, act, to get access to the nanites and suffering quite a bit of damage. He figures out some sort of contraption with a bunch of things mashed together MacGyver style, takes a lot of damage, passes out, and nothing. And as we learn later, teleports out into the vacuum of space. You, also in the vacuum of space, all tethered together, have some spatial hijinks and hazards before you finally reach the the vessel itself. It has now sustained much damage. There is no atmosphere within, uh, but you are able to pick up Zemdek's body as you find the glint floating in space. You hear from the ship's computer, perhaps, some disembodied voice that there might be some atmosphere in the crew quarters, so you head in that direction, but not before you stop to try to perhaps do something to help Zemdek, perhaps revive him. It does not go as expected as the, and Zemdek is now encased in blue terrazine with Argus's hammer now fully encased, not fully, but partially encased within it, giving the crystalline stasis of Zemdak and Blue Terrazine a handle to hold it within without having the Blue Terrazine spread to you. A, unfortunately, this touching moment uh, is interrupted by a massive construct-like creature that has spires on its arms that Icarusly transform into some sort of weapon. Eleazar grabs Zemdek, throws him up into this sky lounge uh, that you created during your retreat, sacrificing himself, then being blasted by this construct. While in the while in the sky lounge, you learn that Twig can connect to the sensors. Here, you find out that uh, uh, that Eleazar's body has been uploaded into one of the pods, kind of three D print style. Uh, in like transporter buffer style where this construct deposited him. You also are able to view and get the gist of what happened with Cole and Zemdak up here while you were gone with some security footage and find a way to the crew quarters where you then find a Spartan and strange uh, living quarters room with a pastoral landscape painting of what the faceless 
could possibly have looked like before they look like where they are now. And the similarity between the skeletal structure of this and the skeletal structure of what you spotted atop the red dragon skeleton down in the raz- in the in the underground of the razor fang is strikingly. However, with one strange as the skeleton that you found underground had a mouth and nose, but this does not. Everything else lines up. And that's where we're going to come back. The air is very thin here, like as if you're at the top of Mount Everest. However, it is still here. It's also quite chilly. Uh, what do they call it? Um, what's the, the Star Trek term for it, or the spaceship term for it? Uh, uh, life support. That's the word. Life support services are at minimal capacity, uh, as far as you can understand. So that means temperature is very low, and so is atmosphere. You do have time here, however, at least as far from your understanding, the lights are still in like kind of like a yellow alert slash red alert. They're dim, they're low, they're on power conservation. The bed is odd, as I explained to you before. It's kind of like beveled like this and then kind of slanted down, so it doesn't make any sense as to how you'd be able to sleep on it. And by looking at these bipedal creatures, looking at them, it doesn't make any sense as to how they would sleep on it either, but who knows? This is where you are. Um, There's not much else in this room. It looks like there is a possibly type of maybe pot that could be similar to ceramic maybe uh, that at once perhaps had some sort of flora in it, but now has some sort of petrified type of plant that has been sitting there for who knows how long. Uh, You're afraid to touch it. You don't know if it's going to fall apart or not. Everything else here is quite sleek, almost like the room was sanded. Uh, Smooth. There's very, very else little here. Uh, I don't want you to get the idea that it's too Star Trek-y, although that is kind of the idea that I'm going for here. Uh, But you don't see any, like, terminals or anything else like that. You just see this up on a mantle that doesn't really have a fireplace, the bed, and a small, like, landscape, wide, wide oval-type window that does look out into space. There is some writing, as you were able to notice, uh, especially given your passive assessment, Argus, uh, that is similar, as you pointed out, to Trishani. She's able to also spot that this is the same type of script that you'd seen written on the pods, perhaps not in the same fashion. It is in an up and down, uh, kind of like a Japanese kanji, preferable than, than left to right, uh, but it again is in some sort of referral language or language that you don't have enough context to entirely understand and interpret just quite yet. It is on the uh, one of the walls that just appears to be bare, that's just in, engraved into the walls there. Uh, the material that the walls are made out of, the bottom is, seems to be some sort of like tapestry or carpet, something that's soft to the touch. Uh, it's comfortable for you to, st- for you to stand on. Uh, there's a mix between pragmatism and comfort here. The walls are made of very similarly, but not quite the same type of, you're not sure if it's an ore or a metal or a stone type of material that, remember, the idols were made out of? Not, but not quite. It's not the same type of material. It has the same type of understanding as far as how you would classify a solid of you're not sure whether it is an ore or a metal or a stone, but it is not the same material that the idols were made out of. Uh, it is a, a lighter perhaps stone or your or, or metal or you're not sure um, the same thing has been kind of with the hallways the hallways you have a bitter idea of like perhaps this is more metal than it is ore or stone but it's again this entire structure is made out of material that defies your classification of what you could put it in as a solid uh, so uh, it's very difficult to determine uh, and it's also difficult to describe thank you TJ uh, so <laughs> That is what you see. These are all the only really pretty much noticeable things here. Uh, very dim lighting. You also are able to know um, actually, what's your passive perception? 20. 20? Roll a perception check. That's not good. <laughs> like passive. Yeah. Something Ooh. that takes a little bit more than that. I'm not, no, I can't get higher than my passive anyway. Why do you ask him to roll anything? 
Uh, yeah, you can. You 14. can get a natural 20 plus your perception. You could get literally any, anything that beats a dirty 20, you can get. What's your perception bonus? Five. So you yeah. get a you get 15, a 16 or higher. 15, yeah, but I got a nine. Okay. So, <laughs> in true so you're in the room. <laughs> yeah. You, you got a nine. So you you think you're in a room, but you've been wrong before. Well, I mean, I got a 14. <laughs> I rolled a nine. Uh, Mechal, you are here as well. <laughs> All of this is a, 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 the definitionary, the def. The dictionary definition of alien, as far as not like gray people, but like foreign to you. Okay, but from now on, you're gonna have to pick a different allegory because you can't read the dictionary, anyways. So uh, he's just gonna. That go. was meta, but okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Mechel picks a corner and goes and slouches down. Yeah, they're kind of like rounded corners too. There's no sharp corners here. Oh, that's fine. That's even better. Mm-hmm. You can lean up against one. Yeah, nice yeah. carpet. Yeah, whatever yeah. it is. I'm gonna try to get some sleep. Me- Michael, let's get the dome up. I know you don't know what the dome is. Yeah. Uh, log. No. There is just oh, enough room to pull the dome Thanks, out of log. here. Like there's like a, what perhaps is maybe like a living room area. This is a small quarters, probably meant for only one or two people as far as you can tell. Um, but yeah, there's probably room to do that. It'll make yeah. it more comfortable in here. Right. A little warmer. Michael sighs and stands back up. A little bit more air too. Swing yeah. a little. So, uh, just to recap, the things you see in the room are the bed, the script on the kind of blank, smooth wall, and the pot with what looks like, pl- pl- uh, oh, I'm sorry, the pot with the, what looks like uh, petrified flora in it, the window, and the painting on the mantle. There's not really a mantle. It's just on the wall where you where you'd aesthetically think a mantle would be. That's it. That's all that's in the room. And like uh, the carpet, which is like a tapestry, but you're not sure. Like it feels kind of like moss, but it's uh, like a darker crimson in color. Not like a more like a burgundy than anything else. Okay. Um. Thank you for putting up the dome. Do you? I feel like it's not exactly an operating table, but we could try to put your arm back. Anything that works. Okay. Let's. um, You know how to do that. Again, I feel like my sister's with me right now and I'm able to kind of use her knowledge, so. I'm right here. I, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> right, that never went away. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm still machine. It's not concentration, is it? No. It just, it just <laughs> stays. It's, I mean, it's still in bikini. It's been too. more than an hour, so <laughs> you have just recasted it. But it, like, just... it makes sense for Log to just habitually, like, without thinking, just, oh, I feel like it's gone. I didn't. Well, my just understanding is, like, we're going through the Maw, and it's better to look like a Mahi Tan when you're going through the Maw. That's his understanding yeah. of. What's going on? And so I don't think just... you guys have been up here for an hour yet. So yeah, it's no, we just still... we were because we were. We were in the oh right, lounge. you were. Yeah. So I still think you probably just without thinking, just <laughs> out of habit, uh, makes sense because Log has done it so many times. He just has the feeling something is an end, and he just does it. Just like when you get the feeling you need to pee, and you just go pee. You're like you you go to the bathroom first. And then you... <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> well, I don't know about Log, but he lives a leg. That is a learned. He lives a leg. Yeah. <laughs> Goes over to that petrified tree. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I could use stop, water. Stop peeing in the pot. Uh, it is. It's more of like a, a, a like a side table with a pot on top of it. Like uh, could perhaps like some sort of. Flower. Yeah, but he looks. Sorry, she looks like she's tall enough to actually use it. So. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, so okay. The, <laughs> so you guys Chamber are wanting to Let's yeah. keep going. Yeah. Are you so. guys setting up the dome? Is that what you guys are doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm so gonna start working on. You're setting it up then. Yes. Yeah. Because you're the only one that has it. Yeah. Correct. And okay. then I'm so you take ten minutes to do that, mm-hmm. and We're simultaneously start. start trying trying to put well, my hand I guess back twenty. On. No, because it's because it, it could it's, just be an action. It's it could be an action it, as a ritual. Then you it's, got, yeah. Um, are you making this look like anything, or just vanilla right now? I mean, just how my dome usually looks. Okay, usually cool. It just looks like a moon on the horizon. Yeah. Oh right, that's so cool. Um, <laughs> it's like. A, a big version of those little like moonlights, kind of like the, your little sunlight that you have over there, <laughs> your little produce flame. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, cool. Eventually, the you start doing some surgery prep. The biggest challenge, well, the two biggest challenges that you're going to have with here is that you don't have the right tools. Uh, you don't have your sister's toolkit. You don't have all the surgery, <laughs> surgical implements. And the second one is that you don't have the appropriate facilities as far as a... Just Rio just passed out of 
Uh, um, the uh, a clean workspace, examination table, uh, like a P PPE kit, those types of things, uh, and yeah, like a a, a, a surgery room. Uh, so you're dealing with. You don't know what's been in here uh, for how long. You're not dealing with something that is that is the, the it's very cold. The air is very thin. So you're, those are the big challenges you're going to do. However, the knowledge how to do this stuff is there. There is so that metal, melon baller tool in the bag right. of holding. Yeah, if you want to use a melon baller to stitch an arm get together. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's a magical simic tool. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Any magic tool. Yeah. 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 getting prepped for. Oh, Meckle remembers that your arm is still in his bag, so he takes it out. And <laughs> as you guys are prepping, he's playing with the hand, occasionally shaking it, so, you know, keeping it limber out of freaking mortis. <laughs> it has had gentle repose on it, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not getting any more rigor mortis on it magically, but yeah, yeah sure. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the <comedy>. Yeah. <laughs> gentle repose um, on the hand. There's also an antimantine dog bone. Um, I... It's actually been turned into a uh, sharpened, I'm just going off whatever is on the. Uh, you What's mean the back a, list. like a whetstone? Yeah. Oh right. Remember we? Yeah, the we, whetstone. Uh, we sharpened mm -hmm. it. Yeah. You turned it into like you use the things to turn, the rounded parts of it to turn it into like one of those yeah. handheld knife sharpener things. Which, actually, give me that because I might be able to use it for a little bit of scraping and retraction a little bit. Yeah. There's also Cook's utensils. Uh, tongs? Give me the tongs. It might be. It might work. I think there are tongs in. I think there are I mean, yeah. cooks' utensils. I have my tongs. Oh, thanks. No, no, I'm not giving you the arm. I'm just hitting you with it. <laughs> okay. Um, Stuff in yourself. Stuff in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> just sanitize. Ah, things. yes, in the wake of the death of so many. <laughs> just sanitize things. Just uh, can you per create Brilliant. a little? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Can you do a little bit yeah, of that? Yeah, absolutely. I'll take out the knife. Uh, Papa Micah's knife and use that as part of my scalpel and things like that. Um, and yeah, any just I mean, sutures. I forging kits, but that's not really. I would be surprised how much. Uh, Smith tools. It's not that different sometimes, <laughs> honestly. There's a fishing kit if you need, like, you know, lime. For oh, yes, please sewing. give me some of that yeah. lime. Yeah, yeah. I don't have Great. too much spare lime. Bag of yeah. <laughs> 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 just rummaging through. Thank you. You're Adam. just like, mm -hmm. I need something you. like this. And you reach your hand and you're like, oh, okay, that worked. <laughs> 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 because it's like, you could, like, jump in there and check it out, or you just, like, think of something that's similar and you try, like, but usually you have to be pretty specific. But yeah, yeah, logs just, you just keep, you see log just reaching in and being like, dang. Dang. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, fishing line, okay. <laughs> Keeping thinking of other things to see, hope, see what's in there. So, yeah, there's a... It's definitely, like, field medic kind of level items. Yeah, you're doing triage at this yeah. moment. Um, yeah, I say with fishing line, do you have a needle? Um, you can make one. Because it says fishing kit, so I imagine there'd be like you know. Yeah. Be oh yeah, you could use a yeah, yeah a fish that, hook. Yeah, we can that's, also use that's the exactly dog what you do. Cut off anything we really and we could. Okay, okay. Knife, so butterfly knife and yeah. The part where so you've got the the stitching of at least the epidermis covered here now, as far as the tools that you need to do this. The connection of the nerves, the bone, and the tissue requires materials and mortar and stuff like that that is difficult to come by. Uh, a lot of these things have been magically enhanced and created uh, that are available in any Majin surgical studios. Now, if you have an idea as to something you could come up with, the, these are the type of supplies you would need to try to do something. You're mm -hmm. trying to graft muscle, nerves, bone, and epidermis back together in order to create the, full functionality. Magic muscles, will absolutely help with this. The muscles you can use sutures on, too. You can, so, yes. Uh, but the nerves and the um, vasculature is a little bit different. I mean, yeah. you can still do This is also a long but... surgery. Based on how long this... Uh, uh, magic will help shorten it of course, because of the Annie Bajin grafting style, how and you have your sister's knowledge and access to her spells and all that jazz. However, this is not something that's going to take quickly. Gr with how long that the hut is up for eight hours, several of these hours are going to be spent between Argus and Trishenny doing this. 
you will not get a long rest in during the period of this because of the surgery, unless you want to knock Argus out for this procedure. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you want to be under for this, or do I, you want to see? I don't need to see. No. Granted, we have gut buster. Granted, Argus is also the best healer. I also uh, have no spells. That too. Yeah. So it's. it's I, I'm pretty you tapped need to, out of things. Yeah, you need to get rest. Except for guidance. The, the best thing he could do would be possibly guidance mm -hmm. and a decent, good amount of medicine checks to help with that that I'm type not of thing. To medicine. Yes. Right. I'm, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm slapping me with your. You should do that harder. <laughs> <laughs> Whack! Who who is trained in medicine? Nobody Cole. here, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. You're trained in medicine. Yep. Look at that. But Me he's exhausted. Mm -hmm. Well, Ameko also has all of your clerical knowledge. That's true. <laughs> hey, you you guys both realize this? Look at each other and then look over at Meckel just <laughs> slapping he his might face. Be no, the but I'm using his, own his hand. arm. Oh, you're using yeah. your <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's why I told him to hit himself harder. Yeah. You I'm, need that, by the way, from him. I mean, <laughs> if you can give me a hand a little bit for. Oh, Thank you. Maybe too. Bad yeah. jokes. Um, I start. Very, very his tempted fingers. to give you all a D4 <laughs> of psychic damage for that dad joke. I don't need it because. I don't get psychic. What's up? Cole's tentacle whip I could use for some of the um, Do we have his tendons. Backpack? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Backpack. It is a tough well, cartilage either. that could absolutely be used mm -hmm. to graft. Um, Do we still have the worm head? Yeah. Biomaterial. Uh, the worm head? The yeah, or some... Do you have any random hands that are, or bones or anything? We got Cole's fingers. None of them have been preserved. They're not on, the, on this list. I think Cole's fingers might actually be the best. I don't know. None of the hands. Wait, you've or, got fingers? Or hands. No. Guys, oh, okay. guys, those are several days old. You are very well aware that in order to properly graft something not, together, not, you not need fresh fingers. donors. Not his fingers. Yeah. Because I mean, there Cole's, hasn't hit to be. Cole, Cole's fingers. Cole's, I know, Cole's fingers. But I'm saying like hands and worm well, skull and stuff like well, that. Just, I, I just the bone the part. For bone, yes. That's all I was yeah. Pretty sure the hands. I'm sorry, yes. Idea. Okay. We do have Tortezi's body. <laughs> Are you okay with that? Wait, what? Yeah. He's not using them. I, take a look. It, it is a clean cut. I don't think I need a lot. I, I do have a, the amphitheater skull. Oh, the amphitheater, yeah. Yeah. So I've got that skull. Uh, of, like the flying little drake dudes that follow right. the would, would this be useful? I pull out something... A piece of some sort of brain more. suspended in the with the spinal fluid. Can you use this? I don't know. It was in Cole's. I I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Only because those, uh, yeah, those, those things are. Brains. I slowly caress the thing with Argus's hand. So no, okay. No, I think it might take over. At least the the um, tentacle whip is a little bit different. Um, why don't you do me a favor, real quick? As far as go ahead. Uh, there's also a uh, Umber Hulk parts. Got some cool like chitin on your arm too, like a little you know like. Little Whatever shoes. you think Speaking is good. Voyage. Okay. Yeah, I know he's got it. He's got his dragon scale, but I don't know how that would work out too well. Um, why don't you go ahead and roll a medicine check, given all these supplies, to see what it is, uh, yeah. so what, what kind of supplies you can gather. Right. Can Meckle yeah. assist her? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I just point uh, stuff out with your yeah. hand. Yeah. yeah, part of it is like stuff that you've learned through the doctor's lab just by being in there so many times. Well, not lab, but like, you know, we're, the doctor's sessions by being there so many times. And a bunch of it is also uh, kind of like healing knowledge that you've had from the flashbacks of experiences that Argus has had to deal with. So go ahead. All right. All right, you ready triage to Triage that he's had to do in the battlefield. Welcome to flashback of children surgery. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> it's you know the what? opposite. Um, Meckel, I need you to roll wisdom saving throw for that one. But you can give you her advantage. Yes. <laughs> um, unless your me medicine is higher than hers. Well, no. It needs to be you because you need yeah. you need to know what it is that's. Plus, happening. you'd be using your sister's medicine. Exactly. Right? Yes. All Whichever right. one is higher. <laughs> definitely, Trisha. I got a nine. Is. You got a, so. a nine wisdom. wisdom saving throw. Yeah. Um, 
there are some flashes of some, I don't want to say horrific, but because the, 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 the emotional vibe you're getting from it during the flashback is something that was for the greater good and although cruel necessary, uh, but it is not a, how do you say, easy thing to watch. Um, it is graphic in nature as you get the flashbacks of the surgery upon children. I was trying not to say that, but um, yeah. Uh, as it's like a whole movie, as like necessary amputations in order to save lives. From my perspective of doing it, yeah, I know, but Mechbo yeah. was reacting to, yeah. So there's, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are. You hate my it is, too. yeah, yeah. <laughs> For you, interestingly enough, it seems familiar. Not from Argus's perspective, but. Uh, almost like, you know, when you sometimes have those dreams where you're removed from your own body and you see yourself in the third person. Uh, it's kind of like that, but having pure empathy for what is happening. For some reason, you feel familiar and complete empathy with what's happening, which makes you feel like at some point you may have been on the opposite end of something like this. Uh, I, I yeah. shake my head, but hopefully still help you in whatever... <laughs> endeavor with the healing check you were. I mean, yeah. even if it's just holding this back here a little bit and do, giving me some tr uh, traction. Uh, there I is also a healer's kit in here, if that helps at all. Oh, well, yeah, that definitely yeah, helps. Yeah, that'll be huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is, I, I like, just now found it, like, you know, I keep digging. Um, if there were, uh, is there, is, uh, like, uh, educate me, is there such a thing as second aid? There's first aid. Is there such a thing as like, second aid? That, that's is that a thing? First aid well, fails. Uh, there is in my world, I guess. Like, well, first aid, like, your first response to things. Yeah, so sure. second aid would be, like... Hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> this is this is just a little bit more, the healer's kit is a little bit more advanced than first aid, because yeah. it also allows you to resuscitate and stabilize somebody in the field in triage. So mm -hmm. it's like uh, it's like a, um, a doctor on calls bag, pretty much. It has all that stuff in there, uh, or a field triage kit that is enough to fit in a small satchel. Kind of like a go bag with first aid, a first aid plus. That may have like stitches and stuff. It, it, it will absolutely yeah. have all of that stuff. Yeah. There. It also has <laughs> some <laughs> small uh, uh, pieces of 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 things in order to like put scar and uh, scar tissue over like something that would actually be dissolved that's been magically somewhat imbued to be able to uh, put like do skin grafts and everything like that. So there's there's absolutely a bunch of other stuff in there that you could possibly use for these types of things. Okay. Uh, so go ahead, roll your medicine check, add advantage. I will say the healer's kit will give you a plus two for this too. Okay. Because now you have proper supplies. Okay. Um, it's different with your sister because she actually knows what she's doing. The DC here is a little wonky. Yeah, so. I'm still using machetes. Yeah, yeah. 25. 25. Shit, that's a rousing success. Actually, no, 26. Sorry. Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> this isn't for the actual surgery. This is to determine what if you have the supplies that you need to do what it is and you know how to use them. Okay. You, you realize, okay, great. I can take, um, I can absolutely um, use a firebolt to like blowtorch a piece of the tooth of the worm off, which has extremely strong bone. Um, but that would, uh, with the use of anima gin magic, uh, be, have it become mellifluous enough so that it would bond, no problem, easy. Skin grafting, epidermis, easy. easy. All that stuff's in the healer's kit. I have sutures, totally fine. Muscle, a little bit more complicated. Um, but there's just a lot more. It's not just like stitching skin. I've, Correct I've, me if I'm wrong. I've done that before, okay. personally, it, so it's But not... it's, it's like three-dimensional. <laughs> it's not just two-dimensional, so it has to be a little bit more than Even that, Even skin right? is three-dimensional. Three I understand. Is it more difficult than than stitching a uh, a superficial lesion? I, uh, it's just another layer of of doing. Okay, it, and just basically. a lot. So this, but this is a whole arm. Yeah, no, I think the, would the be most a... challenging part is going to be the nerves. Honestly. Okay, cool. Um, if you have anything fun, you could put something fun. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the the most challenging, other than the nerves, the most challenging part now is that Argus's arm has stopped bleeding and started clotting. Meaning that, which is not great, because 
Well, yeah, because then, so what I would do is just take, as I'm sewing it up, basically reopen it. Yeah, you're gonna have to reopen it. Yeah. Like you know, you there are there's some like analgesic and antiseptic and other stuff like that, and like you, the equivalent to alcohol in the healer's kit that you're able to pretty much make it a fresh wound so it can bond easier. But you also don't want to, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, disinfect it too much because then it will kill the parts and they won't be able to bond. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, you tell me because you, it's it's weird because I have to tell you whether you succeed or fail or not, but you have to tell me whether I'm doing this right. <laughs> Would holy water help? It, for sterilization. We need we need to flush it out a little bit. Yeah. So and there's also salt in the bag. Okay. We can get some saline going then too. Okay. So that's that's how you keep it clean if there's any iodine as needed for large wounds and stuff. I would say given the disposition too, but... of Argus and the magical implications of things like holy water and saline, you can turn holy water into a saline solution. Holy that will saline. work doubly <laughs> <laughs> holy saline. Uh I've got to make that a thing. Uh it probably already is. Um but yeah, I would say that that could work quite well. The bone, you got it. The muscle and the epidermis, you've got enough material to deal with that if you need to pull some from, I would say, the best chance you have of getting extra material in order to bond the muscle uh, other than just doing sutures is going to have to come from another part of Argus's body. Like, take a different part. Like, you know when you sometimes take skin grafts from someone's back and then put it on like burned pieces mm -hmm. of body and stuff like that and then this will heal up just fine uh, so uh, that would be something that you would need uh, this is going to be painful it's not going to be easy uh, so which is being painful yeah. uh, <laughs> that's kind of what it is uh, there is definitely a thing where if <laughs> you <old>. are <laughs> like not magically influenced Masochist. to be put asleep there is a chance that you could wake uh, and jerk from the pain and not be able to sustain it and cause uh, uh, complications during the surgery. Does that make sense? Because it's hard to do that. Because we don't have the facilities to clamp you down and 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 pin you down and make sure that you don't move. Yeah. I can't drink the gut buster because then I'm going to be all messed up tomorrow. Um, Plus, it also would make your your blood really thin. Blood, blood really very bad. thin, and that's not good. Do you guys have a knife I can borrow? A dagger, something sharp. What for? Well, we're going to need lots of blood clotting material if we do this. Mm -hmm. And I think this carpet, if it's anything like moss, will actually soak up blood very well. Do me a favor. Um, uh, go roll a nature check. Uh, I'll give you advantage because of that uh, observation. So if it just, just I guess it's a straight roll because you're exhausted. Yeah. Just, just re-roll it. Oh, yeah, re yeah okay. Because you roll one. Roll one. You don't roll a one. Okay, what do you want me <laughs> to roll? Oh, survival? Nature. Uh, or nature or survival? Um, Wisdom or either's fine. Okay, uh, 12. 12. Um, good work. It does, one of the things that you did notice while feeling it is that, granted, you're not big on the flora, given your upbringing and your environment in which you grew up on, uh, as far as something like moss. Uh, but this does feel like either it once was alive or it still is alive. Like, it feels organic. All right, I'll start. Possibly. You have don't a know. dagger in Cole's backpack. Oh, okay. Here, I'll hand you your arm. Thanks. And uh, start cutting up <laughs> pieces <laughs> of uh, carpet. Uh, you got it. You need that more. Yeah. I mean, I will need We still have this wool. We never okay. figured out what the fuck it does. You start to, like, Magic take yeah. pretty much like a carpet sample. Uh, not dissimilar from... We think it is. You're going to pull yeah. up a piece of carpet? Came from my dreams, so... Nope. Not dissimilar oh. from something like this. Oh, okay. A little wow, carpet sample. Um, and uh, as you do, you see the carpet or whatever it is start to... Moss carpet or whatever they start to... Fix the hole very, very, very slowly. But it's enough like when you watch hops grow that you can see that they are growing because they grow so fast. Uh, but it's like very, very, very subtle. Could could you use this as a bandage material? You as could. I point out the roots of the moss slowly coming. Roll an entry check. Or medicine. Or yeah, whatever. No, no, no. I mean, I like, thinking about it could who... kind of be both depending on... Which it really you'll depends. Get, you'll get inf different information depending on which one you want to roll. Okay. Sorry. He's Nature so or medicine? 
you said? Yep. We're going to do medicine then, 16. 16. Um, it is biological. Mm -hmm. um, it also appears to be similar to a more base form of biology, meaning it's probably closer to how would I describe something as a stem cell than it would be a multicellular organism. Does that make more sense? What is, what is the piece that I've cut Like it's, it's more foundational. It's more like like primordial ooze based than it is like uh, a fully fledged, kind of like how mycelial networks are a little bit more adaptable and they're more foundational and base and based and, and sorry, one second. And uh, rather than something that's so complicated that it might not go well with other things. It seems, oh shit, you have your sister's knowledge. This seems like something that the anima jinn have been trying to create a long time, which is kind of like programmable biomass. Um, yeah, can you get like an extra little bit of that even? And oh yeah. Okay, cool. Um, you can what, cut up as what much is, as you like. What is the piece that, I'm, that I've already cut away from it doing? Nothing. It's not extending no. roots or anything like that? No. Nope. Um, yeah, I proceed to cut as much of the carpet as how much of the carpet do you want to cut off? <laughs> uh, what's below the carpet? Uh, how deep do you cut? Is there like, how deep is the moss? Uh, the moss appears to be about like, well, I, I need to know how deep are you shoving your dagger into the floor? Uh, until it stops on something hard. Okay, so uh, I'd say like the dagger's about like what, maybe six inches sure. long, something like that, perhaps? Um, you shove it about like three to four inches before you feel something that stops you a little bit more. You try to pry up a square that's big. You do find some sort of substrate beneath it. You're not sure what it is. It could soil, maybe, you don't know. You're not familiar with whatever substrate. It looks like alien soil or substrate or something like that. Uh, as far as you can tell, it is substrate. You don't know okay. if it's like wood chips or it's soil. soil. But yeah. under that, it does look like uh, the floor has the same type of material that it makes up the walls and the ceiling. Okay. I will cut a roll of it. Like you do with yeah, the sod you can or whatever. Cut a, a, a yard bolt of this sure. if you'd like. And uh, set this beside you. Okay, and then that you. little piece that I had, if it's not doing anything, I'm just going to gently take a little bite out of it. Okay. Uh, can you roll a constitution saving throw for me? Cockeyed. The other was six con. Um, eight. Eight. Um, it tastes like dirt. All right. Not the substrate, the actual moss. Yeah, I okay. mean, it has a little bit on it, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but it tastes like, it tastes right. earthen, you know? Not, not too different if like a, if you ate moss, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Is there moisture in it? Um, only enough, I would say, to keep it from being entirely, like, dried, like you would, uh, uh, like, dried upside down bouquets and feathers and okay. stuff like that. Uh, only enough to make it so that it's not, like, crunchy and dried and crispy. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to save some of this. Whenever we see my sister again, she's going to love it. Right. And then oh, speaking of which, that does mean that the soil here is live soil. It's not soil that's been exposed to the vacuum of space. And if it has, it's still live. Doesn't mean anything. Yeah, to, to you. To sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Don't care. Means um, something to the scientists at the table. Yeah. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> Cody's over there like, oh. <laughs> Did I ever teach you feign death? Uh, no way. I think we talked about it. You, you got a lot of cool shit you got to show me. Because you could have cast that on me ritually, and then I would have been knocked out. Well, you could teach it to me now. I don't have it prepared now. It's the story of your life, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's why it's always good to take notes. <laughs> uh, well, I need to take a little bit of I mean, like, I could choke you out. Uh... Could you, though? <laughs> I mean, if you like let me, like you'd have to let me. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted right now. So, <laughs> if I wasn't exhausted, it's very weak hands around here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Was this something you learned back at the, the pleasure house when we were there? I mean, or? you know, she, Midnight showed me a few things and, you know. Okay, cool. Rock on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. Yeah. I mean, you got to be able to keep me alive and I don't know how I can, like, stay medically asleep. I can suggest you take a nap, but as soon as she cuts into you, then it kind of goes away. Well, yeah. So that wouldn't help. No. I suggest you not to wake up. Can you? I want to get back to your twenty-five medicine check as far as the materials. Twenty-six. That you have. Yeah. What is it? Twenty-six. It was twenty-six. Oh, okay, I, cool. I did the math on um, it first. So, so now that you have this moss and everything, you're like, okay, this moss could absolutely be used to have some sort of like stem cell quality towards creating the muscle. You've got the muscle. You've got the bone. Epidermis is easy. Uh, you don't need to take samples from Argus anymore. The nerves are going to be the hardest part. This is where the magic of the anima gin comes in, uh, which you do have your sister has access to cure wounds, correct? Uh, your sister no, healing... herself has knows cure wounds, does she not? That was swapped out for for the... healing spirit. Yes. Okay. Okay. But... Some other like yeah the uh, what was what is it called? Uh, it's not the jackalope. What was it called again? Oh, this particular. Oh, we figured this out. It was a. Um, Otherwise, yes, <laughs> I would absolutely. Oh, actually, I do have one left. I could do it. Um, could. It's like a folklore. I'm trying to remember what it is. Oh, what now? For what? Um, Not the jackalope, but the little like rabbit. Oh, Wolpertinger. Uh, Wolpertinger. Your tattoo, yeah. Wolper, yeah, yeah. Wolpertinger. Wolpertinger. Or or Wolpertinger, because I mean, because it's German, so like the W's of V sometimes. Oh yeah. But, but, yeah. Anything in Cole's book of poisons and punctures. Yeah, you got Possibly. it. Vorpatinga. Yeah. Vorpatinga. Yeah, Vorpat yeah. yeah, you that, say that, that's it. You get the German. <laughs> Vorpatinga. <laughs> it's spelled exactly the way it sounds. Um, Vorpatinga. Yeah. Vorpatinga. Cool. Um, awesome. I forgot you had that. Dude, <laughs> shit. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, bro. Um, so, yes, you have access to that. Um, yeah, I'll say if you want to put that in your space while you're doing it, that, that can absolutely work. What were you gonna say? Because I think we're gonna about to say the same thing at the same time. Go ahead. Um, Argus made the point that maybe Cole has some poison, like some knowledge of poisons and things in that in the book. book that he had in his pack. Oh, so he did a have a drought. book of poisons and ah, yes, um, the name of the book. Does anybody name, remember the name of the book? If you remember the name, I'll give you a world inspiration. Paul's Tome of Poisons and Punctures. You got it before I did, so <laughs> to go ahead and take a world inspiration. Ow. What is it's on Cole's bag. Oh. <laughs> like, he had nice. <laughs> he was prepared for this session. He's Paul's like, Tome of Poisons and Punctures. Yeah, you got it. Um, Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> guys are here. In spirit. Uh, perfect, yeah. Uh, what is it that you wanted to do with poisons and stuff? Just c create like a sleeping tonic, basically. For, oh, or see if oh. there's anything in there that we could. Sure, like some valerian root stuff like that. Um, this is a good point. As far as the resources that you have available. Oh, Log, Eliezer grabbed a couple of some ingredients from the kitchen for that tea that he made you to help with that exhaustion mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, he just, like, stuffed in your bag while you weren't paying attention. You could absolutely grab some of that stuff and try to make some sort of, you know... Chamomile. Yeah, valerian. chamomile and some, like, a dash of valerian root and some other stuff, yeah. Brewer's supplies that I make my coffee with. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, you, I'd say among... of. You guys have been adventuring so for so long uh, with how much stuff you've collected. You could probably, and with the aid of the book, no role required, you could probably make some sort of sleep aid for him. Okay. Um, as far as keeping him asleep under extreme pain, that's a little more difficult. But what I will say is that he will get advantage on his constitution saving throws because of that tincture. Does that okay. make sense? Yep. Um, you want to roll high in your constitution saving throws to okay. stay asleep. Uh, do you ingest this Absolutely. easily made tincture? It, easy, it. easy to do. You got your brewer's <laughs> stuff. You use your brewer's kettle. Uh, you Either of you can make some fire to warm it up, brew it easily enough. Boom, 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 boom. Um, uh, I said, right. I was talking about your good medicine check and 
the, the materials that you had. The, yeah. Like like we had discussed, the nerve's gonna be the hardest part. This is gonna be have to be magic help. So the rest of it is gonna be medicine checks as far as actual surgery. The and then there's gonna be another auxiliary part to it that has to do with uh, any magin part of it or part of the grafting because it's too it's not just scientific physical surgery it also is assisted with magic yeah. and they have to happen at the same time because of how this works it has to be like okay they're finally put together while magic is going and then and then you tighten the sutures as like things start to writhe around each other kind of like how vines would writhe around each other with druid craft mm -hmm. that type of thing um are you headed to sleep are we ready to start this? Is that what we're doing yeah. here? Do we need to tie him down? Um, with what? With something to that where? doesn't burn, because who knows what I'm going to do while I'm asleep. Um, I'm going to look at the bed again. That weird So angle. make sure you grab the ball gag and the shackles that we have. Yep. Wait, we have shackles? Yeah. We have some wait, shackles. wait, manacles, yeah. 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 Um, so I'm going to look at the bed like again. This wasn't actually a reason to <laughs> use the ball game. Um, it's, it, it's, I, I will give this one to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that I've been mentally conditioned that every time you bring it up. Okay, so I look at the, so often. <laughs> at the weird triangular shaped bed. Yeah. Uh, does it have like a it's not like It's not like 45 degree angle. It's a little bit more like this. And then it's angled as if... Uh, those like sleep number weird beds where it's uh, sleeping on an incline type of thing, but please. Go okay, ahead. so um, I'm gonna take off the bedding. Is yeah, there like sheets. a mattress or something? Um, it's gonna be moss. I there is some type of soft cushion to the material that is on this bed. However, it looks like it is almost form and attached to the foundation of the thing that is itself, like. Uh, uh, like the the soft part, if it was like a memory foam mattress, for example, it feels to be like attached the to the bed spring or the or the actual so. part of the bed in. that no, sits on the it. ground. Which and is that's like, a solid piece. It's that's a solid side. piece. Yeah, it's all appears to be like one piece, or it was like yeah. almost as if it was like uh, pr 3D printed all together out of different materials. We do have the forge, the mobile forge. Yeah. I don't know if there's something on there that'd be easy to lay down on or. Something. Not more than the ground. Um, there is a oh a flat piece of like workbench place for you to do stuff with. As far as like, uh, it actually, seems I'll start cutting a <laughs> really an Argus yeah. size <laughs> hole in the substrate of the carpet. Okay, cool. Where like if he's laying, there's on a, his so side, much any holes in this carpet yeah, now. You could crawl into that on your side, and then we could wedge blankets so you can't turn. Do what you want with me, and I down this tea. <laughs> All right. The sheets you can pull off, they're kind of like, they're an equivalent to silk, but they're not, they're not silk. They're some of the down. material not recognized, but they're kind of like silk. There Just don't forget the ball. So they're yeah. strong. You could definitely use yeah, bedding to so kind of like tie him like you would um, to try to make a, a rope to go outside of the, the window to escape, that type of thing. I, I'm just basically trying to wedge him into the moss substrate <laughs> so that sure. it... You know, she has full access of the side of the body right. that she needs. So all this considered, fine. Like you know, use great. parts of the the mobile forge because it's just too fitting for putting Argus back together. Yeah, in the, forge. Um, the mobile <laughs> forge will, the mobile forge and the hut cannot fit in here together. Um, you have to pick one or the other. Just the anvil, at least. To the, it, it, like, you, you don't get a choice as to right. what appears. You, it's just the oh, whole okay. thing pops. Out. Oh, okay. I I don't know if you had just a separate anvil. I don't think I'm carrying around an anvil. That would be a little, a little. A little uh, yeah, that would well, be isn't that what the forge itself is? In the shape uh, of it's, an it's a small a little. An it's like a, it's like it is a portable animal. It's quite heavy, but it is a small one. It's one that it's still you can fit in your backpack, but it's it's heavy. Uh, but you know you're used to it. I mean, it's in the bag of holding, so it's yeah, weightless. Yeah, so yeah, so wouldn't matter. That's um, just it's that up that to you has guys. An anvil in there. Because I'm, I'm like trying to feel like the wonkiness of unfolding a dimensional it's, space of an item like partially within the hut. And it's like something that I don't even want to touch right now. No, <laughs> I don't even no. want to try it to was, touch it. it was more so I have to say, like, I think that dimensional space is. That's right. It was just a flavor. Sure. It was just for flavor. Yeah, no, no, all, it's fine. So. I, I just. We don't need it. 
No. I'm also don't. trying to think that now you've brought it up as far as the precedent. I'm thinking we're like I don't have no. I don't think I have a problem as far as like you trying to make the sky lounge appear within the hut and try to go in there as far as dimensional spaces. But something that would kind of like overlap the boundary of the hut raises a bunch of questions that I'm not, I don't think I'm quite prepared to answer. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, I would like to rule in favor of them having to be, have their own space. Okay. Um, uh, granted, if you come up with some fucking cool thing that makes a lot of sense to me, then have at it. I'll reward you for your great deal. Kind of do it the other direction, but not because we have the hut now. I would say if you set up the forge first and then right. put the hut there, yeah, eh, sure, why not? But not, yeah, the other way because of the way the hut blocks spells and all that. that exactly, way. thank you. Yeah. So, so we can sleep now <laughs> yeah. and then do the surgery later. No. I, mean, I can redo the hut as many times as we need. It's just a ritual, so. Yeah, well, that's. Regardless, you have all the materials you need. Um, the thing that you're not sure about going into this, again, <laughs> I've said this far too many times, is the nurse, because your sister hasn't even done this type of surgery, this advanced on a... No, she did for the fins that would have had to have some nerve correct, connections, so... Correct, but not an entire limb. Yeah. Um, this was this was much smaller. Um, it was other type of thing. It was also on yourself uh, uh, with... It, like, there's a little bit... Yeah. Uh, as far as attaching a whole arm, this is a little bit more... It's, it's just it's just do more you, work. It takes more you, time. As you're contemplating this, do you need living tissue? Is that the hold up? She has all the supplies mm -hmm. she needs. The, I'm in for the nerves. Does it, it need healing? I mean, it it would help, I think, but I. I'm going to stop magic. you. Like the just just to, to help you with this, the Anima Gin uh, science has not. Science has not gone far enough to be able to use actual materials to graft nerves, is quite, which is where the magic um, picks up the slack from. Uh, the nerves are what's helped sound. The grafting is where a lot of the, uh, of the, of the nerves is where the anima gen thing, which allows okay. them to then put through stuff that doesn't belong on your body that your body would most likely reject and recognize as foreign entities and try to attack with its with its um, uh, white blood cells and its, uh, you know, like self-defense mechanisms. Uh, and the anima gen prevents that from happening. And there's no benefit to having living tissue as opposed There to is that. a benefit to having living tissue, but not for the nerves because the okay. science isn't advanced enough to be able to actually physically, scientifically graft nerves yet. All of that is magic you know makes sense because mm -hmm. the only reason i ask for everything else yes but she has all the supplies yeah okay okay so you're good all right um i, I could but if you have something cool that it could impress me well mechel will offer you like he's like since the doctor does stuff with me mm-hmm Perhaps my skin or flesh will help. I... You could take oh, a little. because you're a mutant. <laughs> it... I, I don't use the term mutant. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I could take a sample and use it only if I don't think it'll work. If that's okay. If... Sure. Something if I get into a bind, because I know you need to sleep too, and I know you won't be able to help me for the whole thing necessarily. Because this will take a while. Okay, I'll keep the dagger close. Just let me know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, you did ro roll absolutely great with all your supplies. You're set. You have everything you need. You don't need any more tools. Do I need to get that healing spirit in here to pull the thing there? It will be integral to like the grafting okay. part. Um, so yeah, for the just the be nerve prepared thing. to spell to spend the spell slot, but yep. I'm including that in like part of the supplies. Okay. <laughs> just <laughs> okay. Barely. Uh, you take your your tincture. You get knocked out. Uh, every time that she's gonna be rolling a medicine or whatever check, you'll also be rolling a con check. Okay. Here's the deal, guys. This has nothing to do with my DCs anymore. You have to beat each other's DCs. Uh, and which means that there is there is almost always a chance that at least something will go wrong. There's always some sort of complication. Either you wake up and it makes it more difficult, or you make a mistake. Like this is not a this is not an easy thing to do. This is very very difficult. However, 
uh, if both of you roll over a certain DC that I have things, then then we both get to the optimal solution. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, cool? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah. as they're starting, I'm going to actually get, as you're starting to get a little woozy, I'm going to uh, basically whisper, or whisper into your ear that you're you're a god, you can do this. <laughs> and uh, I will actually cast heroism on him. You got it. So you'll get... Give him 10 every, hit points. Every round. Uh, yeah! And it also makes you immune to fear, so... It's a D4, up. correct? Uh, no, it's actually Fine. equal to my modifier. Um, my spellcasting modifier, which is... Charisma. Charisma. So... Two? Yeah, you get a plus two. Okay, so or I'll two. say you can get a plus two to all of your con saves. Okay. Sound good? That's how I'll manifest that. Sound good? Log, you good? Anything you want to do while this is happening? Uh... Yes, actually, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because this has all been a very long day. Yeah, uh, and I was planning on doing this a long time ago before mm -hmm. this turned into such a long day. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to uh, take ten minutes and cast augury. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can at the ten minutes it takes you to cast the dome and the augury is you have plenty of time to do that. It takes them an hour to set this right. surgery up. I mean, it's it's a while. Uh, um, prepping tools, sanitizing things. It's, it's, it's not, a, it takes a long time um, because it's intensive. Sure, and you have to not make any mistakes. You can absolutely do that. You get to ask, I'm sorry, three questions or just no, one? Just, just one just yes one. no And question. I have to tell, and, and I. Way, whoa, or in between. Right. Right. I mean, I can do whatever I want, but yeah. yes, yes, yeah. sure. Yeah. Just. Um, it's supposed to be something that happens in the next 30 minutes. You're fine. I'm just, what I'm doing right now is trying to mine palace and collect as much information into one spot so I can pull it out easily because I have no idea what it is you're going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, can you give me an idea just so that I can be prepped a little bit? Uh, what, or do, do you have something in mind? Well, no, I, I, I'm going to ask the question. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I get nervous with Argory because <laughs> there's so much stuff and my brain spills out of my face. Uh, so, yeah. Um, how, how, do you, how do you cast this spell? Yeah. Uh, well, because I've got my, Is this my the first time you've done this? No, I've done this before. Okay. Uh, I've, got, I've got the bone dice that we bought from the traveling right. tinkerer guy, and so that's, that's what I use for it. Uh, you taught him this, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I, I'm not really sure who receives these anymore, but uh, to, to whom it may concern. Uh, <laughs> this is a good one. Should I kill Pinky? The, the cephalomorph inside your brain. Yes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> to whom it may concern. Because I don't know who gets these anymore. Right. You're also asking a question that has to do with a non-physical entity. Well, it's a little wibbly wobbly on your on your end, but okay. <laughs> um, Twig responds as you're doing this. Um, kind of crawls into the kind of skitters into the center of wh where you're doing this and the holographic projection kind of comes up as you've seen from when you saw all those cameras before what looks like a in script that is like the the alien script that you're not sure of so you can't really read it um, is some sort of image with a image of a cephalomorph uh, of the more uh, mundane type, like of the of the more conventional cephalomorph image, not of Pinky specifically, but just uh, roll an insight check to see if you can have an idea as to what this image is trying to portray. Disadvantage. There are, there's a bunch of text, there's a picture of it uh, in almost like an eight and a half by 11 style. There is 
some sort of other text, you're not sure what it is, that keeps like scrolling and changing. It sets on something and then like like uh, slots, like changes and go ahead. Oh, so disadvantage 10. 10. Um, what you're able to discern is the other text that seems to be scrolling and uh, like slots that keep turning appear to be numerical values of of numerical system that is obviously not of the Arabic system or common system that we're familiar with uh, or Roman numeral, whatever, uh, some other numerical value that keeps turning and changing. Oh, you know what? Fuck. You had disadvantage, right? Yeah. Uh, take the highest of those two because, or the whatever the first one you roll, because it should have been a straight roll. This is something you should have advantage on because of your less than. Uh, so it should have been a straight. Just re-roll it. Just re-roll it. <laughs> Just re-roll it. Straight roll because of your history. Now it's an eight. It's a, it was worse. Uh, this doesn't make any sense. Um, okay. I mean, the, the last two, it was an 18 and a 10. If that it was an eight. Okay. Yeah. No, no. I don't want to punish you for this because it was my mistake. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt here. This looks like uh, a bounty poster. Uh, like a wanted poster. You can't understand any of the words, but the numerical words that's changing look like they become very little and then very big. And then, like, don't have anything. And then become very big and then very little. As far as you can tell, and as far as these precursor people are concerned or whatever these whatever however whoever built this thing uh, the cephalomorphs were not a desired uh, species or just people like wanted to like uh, alive or dead or alive type of deal but the specific question you ask is, should I kill Pinky? Right. And the constant changing of the numbers kind of gives you this idea is like, it doesn't really know, but the information that you do get is that as far as these people are concerned, cephalomorphs are not in good standing. I do know he was trying to be rehabilitated in my mind. That's up to you. Okay. Yeah. But... You did get quite a bit of exposition from that, a little bit of insight, meaning that the cephalomorphs have been around for a very, very long time, if this thing is as old as you guys have tried to discern. Uh, and meaning that they are don't only exist upon Vonteria, apparently. So, good job, nice. Um, cool, are we ready for surgery? This is taking way too long <laughs> to get to this point. All right. All right. Ready to Okay, yeah. so here's the deal. You're going to be rolling your choice of either medicine or arcana checks during this. There might be some points in which I impose that you do a certain one over search, depending on which way, which avenue the dice lead us to. Okay. okay? Uh, and, and you will be always, during these times, unless I say otherwise, rolling a con save. There might be... Are you exhausted? No. Okay. So there you might be times in which... advantage and then plus the thing. So. You do. Right, because so you, you're you good. So you have advantage all the way through unless I say for some reason that you have disadvantage because of something, some other complication in which it would just be a straight roll. Yep. Uh, you will never have full disadvantage on this. Okay. And then are you helping me for part of it at least? My full yeah, two? as okay, much cool. as I can. Okay. So I'll be rolling at advantage. Yeah. That um, are you exhausted? No. Um, yes, I have absolutely no problem unless complications arise for... Both of you be rolling at advantage at all times. You get that plus two, uh, but no guidance. Right. Yeah. You got it. You sleep. Okay, <laughs> so first step is to put you to sleep, and you tell me you're the science with the first step. Bone? Yeah, I'd probably start with bone Like first. core and then work your way out, that type of thing? Do we mm -hmm. have the paladin with us still? No. No, he got... That was Eleazar. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. Who got... Yeah. Uh, I was thinking of the aura. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Zapped. zapped yeah. and then uploaded, 3D printed into a pod. Kind of like a Wraith teleportation buffer, buffer Stargate style. Stargate Atlantis style. Yeah. Um, okay. So, bone so, first. Eli uh, Eliezer. Uh, Argus, Argus <laughs> At least is it wasn't set down, <laughs> knocks, <laughs> knocks out from the tincture, is in that little divot uh, as you begin to work on him, slowly mm -hmm. beginning with the bone. 
18. Which one did you roll? Or 19, sorry. Medicine I, or medicine. Arcana? Medicine. Okay. Natural 20 for 25. 25 and 18, you 19, said? 19. Sorry, 19. I keep... uh, 19, so close. Um, so natural 24, 25, you don't wake up. No complications on that thing. You uh, have to be, uh, for it to vote, well, I can't tell you. Um, <laughs> You think you did an amazing job with this. As you melt the bone into as much as you can, uh, you use magic and other heat sources or anything to try to pretty much solder the bone onto itself, uh, or however you would do it. How would you do it, scientist? Why don't you DM this part? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Um, How does bone would, get grafted? I would stimulate first, because the They've both been cauterized, right? So both segments have been ca cauterized. No, unless so been, you, not unless you want them to. No, you that was how to? it was established yeah. when it went From through the portal. Oh, correct. Yep. Right, right. So, right, right. <laughs> right. So I would... Um, I forgot about that. Scrape that, re, uh, reinvigorate the marrow, and then just basically take a little bit of, like, some sort of tool to... I would use a burr in real life and make the bone like dust and start kind of packing that together again. Got it. You want to make like some little, sort of paste or glue. Screw, and then like screws usually would kind of help keep it together. Easily enough. He has a bunch of forged materials. Yeah. You can easily take and create some sort of screw in the bone. Yeah. Um, like you do so. Uh, you, do, you feel like you did a great job. One of the things that you do notice is that because it was at the elbow and it is at that that joint, mm -hmm. which is more complex than just a clean cut along a, on, along a bone. Is um, the cartilage messed up then? or uh, I would say that he is, uh, the way you've done it is that he's lost a little bit of range of motion. Uh, because of the, the location of the bolt, he could only really ever like, he, he won't be able to ever like fully extend his arm. The most he'll get to is like, 120 degrees rather than a full 180. Yeah. Until we, unless we do a, a surgery to take it out or something. So. Yeah. Unless yeah. you cut it off and use magic to, to do it Yeah, and try again. I just want to double check your work and just make sure I didn't put it on backwards. That's all I care about. Um, <laughs> yeah. Think it'll look right. good. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next one. Here we go. That was the bone. All right. So next would probably be, um, it's going to be vasculature and, and, uh, Maybe some nerves too. So I think either. Okay, so this is going to have probably, to be arcana. Vasculature would probably be first. I'm thinking about it just to get okay. the blood. Yeah. So we're going to do the... this in four stages, unless things other things happen and I decide that differently. Bone. Uh, vasculature. Vasculature. Nerve. Nerve. Soft tissues. Soft tissues. Well, and I'm assuming yeah. skin. I can't give you the so, assistance on the arcana yeah. checks. Probably not. So. Vasculature, though, if I say medicine. anything wrong, just interrupt me and correct me because I don't know anywhere near as much as you've done, and you actually have done this in real life, so please. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean you just you know, automatically give yourself a success. But <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but you wouldn't know. But this would, would be know. the same stuff that Trisheni would or Mishenny would normally. I'm having fun so. learning. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, okay. So vasculature first. Sure. Then. Uh, so so this still medicine. Medicine. Okay. Yeah. Dirty twenty. 24. 24. That is a, a great success on both of your parts. Everything goes swimmingly and great. You feel like uh, he will have no uh, issues as far as blood flow and no gangrene, no rigor mortis as far as that is concerned. It will be a live, a, an alive and healthy limb. Okay. Whew. All right. That part done. Okay, let's do a turkey bit. Start doing the nerves. And this is Arcana. So yes, this helping. is absolutely arcana. Nice. 27. 18. 18. Okay. 20, 27. Uh, you wake up during this part. This is extremely painful because it's literally dealing with the nerves. Uh, she's literally using magic to pull nerves out of you, thin them, and then create and amalgamate new nerves. It is... It feels like your arm is there and it's constantly being burned... And incinerated, 
reconstructed from ash and then burned and incinerated over and over and over again. You wake up in absolute just pain panic. There's nothing you can do about it. It's like uh, no matter how many what how people's pain threshold is, this is an intense, immense, unimaginable uh, part of pain. It it would have knocked you out if you were awake because you, like how judo shuts down the body mm-hmm. because it go, undergoes so much pain as the the mind just says that's too much and it just shuts it down. But the magic is preventing your brain from shutting it down. So you are just an immense amounts of mental pain. You wake up. Uh, that will affect your role because of what's happening as you start to, you can't help it. You start to move around and jostle as you start to scream. Okay. And there's nothing you can do about it. You will roll, uh, what is your hit die? Uh, D8. D8, you're going to roll D8 and you're going to subtract that from her roll. If it goes below a 20, we're going to have an issue. Oh, mate. What was it, a oh. 27? What'd you roll? An 8. What was your roll? 27? It was 27. Or 20. Yeah, tw- yeah, 27. So that brings it to a 19. Um, his movement has caused some problems uh, during this. The nerves are very, very difficult. Uh, and nerve damage is not reparable except by magic. Can I get the little falcon in here to help then with and kind of ameliorate that? Uh, the... The reality of a falcon helping with surgery is beyond me. Uh, that's but the, he's talking about the, the, spirit. the healing spirit. Oh, oh, I thought you meant you're familiar. <laughs> no, that's and that's, I was like, I, <laughs> no, that's that's the healing so what spirit. Are they gonna do? That's Miss Shenny's healing spirit. Yes. Okay. So um, that was just part of the understood. That's one of the things that made this possible. Mm-hmm. Was that I will say. I'm going to do a little bit of roll of my own just as far as I start working over with some fire toe whiskey. Uh, <laughs> uh, there is, yeah, you can, I imagine you grab it immediately and start chugging. Uh, it's up to you. I mean, it will thin your blood. It all depends on what you tell me I can do. I'm completely. You're <sighs> writhing in pain. I imagine having seven kidney stones burned. and being the, burned alive. Yeah, you are. Um, with the, my, uh, the heroism still going. Since I'm going to kind of try, try to calm him to stop moving, sure. uh, really lay into the, you're not afraid of this, it just hurts. Deep breath. Bite down on that ball gag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Sorry, let the fire consume you, my friend. It'll be okay. Um, yeah, there's just like this is, as Mechel tells you, like, uh, pain wants to be felt. It's important. Uh, don't be afraid of this. You can help with this. I am. This is not something you can roll with. I've already rolled for something like this, and I'm considering all of these other things that are happening. You don't know what the complications. You don't know until you're done with this as to what what the uh, repercussions of this problem could lead to. I will say is that. You just know it didn't go optimally. Okay. You would like to think that they will still have facilitated use of the arm, but you don't know to what to what effect and to what magnitude. That makes sense? Yeah. It yeah. It is now Can I... you are now at the point of you are now at the, the point of no return. Either you stop this, sever the arm, and try again later, or you continue, and he deals with it the way it is. Can I use my DM inspiration to reroll my D8? You absolutely can, yes. So then I have my arm back. Yeah. Six. Okay. That, <laughs> that'll bring it to a 21. Um, that'll do it. So Meckles... Uh, as he as he as he holds your head and he stares at you with the ball in your face as you're screaming and he looks at you upside down Spider Man style eye to eye I'm not as he you. as he as he just but he connects mind to mind with you as he's of with you he's just like guy. the pain wants to be felt you need to understand you're okay you're not afraid of this uh, you uh, begin to just like kind of just slowly shake and quiver within you as you're in a lot of pain rather than writhe uh, which allows you to kind of force it and concentrate again as it's only a vibration that you have to account for. You did it. You hope. Yeah. I just stand there and keep drinking the whiskey. <laughs> Save a little for me after. 
You got it. <laughs> Thank you. I can take some now. Last step, <laughs> soft tissues and epidermis. Yeah. Okay. It's medicine. 15. 15. 28. 28. <laughs> um, you're still awake. Uh, you begin to like kind of doze off as the pain becomes too much and your body does try to shut it down as the magic wanes. But now soft tissue, which has a lot of nerve in it and it hurts like hell. Everything is still a lot of pain. You do have one of those involuntary jolts, uh, which during your stitches tears a bunch of the stitches. You got a 28 though? Uh, tears a bunch of the yeah. stitches uh, as Meckle, uh, what do you do to help? Uh... Log is just sitting there drinking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will. Uh, Moral support. I see all the teared stitches or whatnot, and I will uh, talk to his stitches and that the area that she's working with. Yeah. Come on, you can go back together and cast Healing Word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, you start to see some of the stitches kind of intertwine themselves and kind of like a rope snake. Snake yeah. Charmer style, just move back and stir. Some of the other work that you had done had been torn and lesioned because of the massive jerk that had happened, but you're able to pin them down finally as you lean on them with your elbow and you whisper oh, over his chest and you whisper to the arm, come on, it's okay, and you healing word as Trishenny is working away and stitching and being just hold in in there, hold on there. You finish. You wipe your forehead, you wash your hands with what it is you can, precipitation or what have you. Druidcraft. Yep, Druidcraft. Uh, first assessment at looking at your work, this will absolutely be a horrendous scar due to the torn stitches and everything else. It will. There's no way of hiding this scar okay. other than magical means. There's, you also understand that this is not something that's going to be usable right away. This will need a good five days to become facilitatable, but once it is done as such, it should be fully functional with the exception of the limited range of motion. It's like 135, you're saying, instead of 180? Like 120 rather than 180. Okay. So we, like something like this, uh, still rather use than- Still use your shield with it, so. Should <laughs> be, shield still use your shield, yeah. you'll be fine. Um, but you need to let this heal. Uh, magic healing can only do so much uh, at this level. And any medgen surgery is in advanced. So I like the scar is absolutely prevalent. There's no way of hiding it. There's a limited range of motion. You need five days to get it to full functionality. In the meantime, you can still use it. Every time it's, it is your right hand, right? Which one is your, are you right-handed or left-handed? You're right-handed. Right -handed. You're right-handed. Right. So every time you do something with your right-handed that requires stress, like forging, melee attacks, range attacks, those types of things, you will have to roll a constitution saving throw. If you fail that constitution saving throw, the timer resets and she has to do some, some Can, work on your thing. I do somatic components with it. That is more fine motor thing. That's that's oh, that, I'm okay. That's fine. Yeah, because those um, nerves would have been intact, and it's more yeah, just down. That's yeah. the, it, the, that is a, a lot less traumatic than what it is you're doing. You won't have full somatic thing, but I'm not gonna get I too. Also I don't want to get deep in the weeds with that. Very much know how to function with one arm. Watching my father is <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Ooh, you got something in common, like father, like son, now, huh? Um, so yes, that is where so, we are. I know. This, every time this uh, constitution saving throw for making sure that your arm is functional is a cumulative thing. Every time you succeed or fail, every time it has to be rolled, the DC increases. It starts very, very low, which makes sense because you are more tender with it, understanding, but as time goes on, as all of us understand, sometimes we forget we have injuries and we automatically do something and then aggravate the injury. So, makes sense? Uh, for you, for your reference, just so I don't have to remember this, 
We start at a DC two for this constitution saving throw. Every time you roll it, it increases by one. Okay. Until five days has passed, if you have not, if you have not failed the save, after five days, you get m almost all of your functionality back in your arm, and you don't have to do it anymore. Make sense? Yep. Cool. You got your arm back though. You're proud of what you did, especially since you personally were never trained in this type yeah. of thing. <laughs> Thanks, Machini. <laughs> Here. Thank you. Yeah, you got. Okay, Thanks you guys are good. <laughs> <laughs> Forge with assistance, just yeah. using my other arm. You could, yeah. I no. mean, it wouldn't be you. No. So it's one of those things. Like, if you want to do something done right, you got to do it yourself. So. Yeah. Now can I get some sleep? Yeah, I. Th yeah, I think. This surgery did not was not quick. This is something that took three hours to do. Um, so. Log, unless you were awake and just drinking the whole time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you will. You would have to recast the dome in order for it to remain for eight hours in order to get sleep. All right. Okay. Get ready. Now I have to roll for every hour that you guys are asleep. <laughs> to see if the mouse eats you. So I have to roll a total of 11 <laughs> times. Well, well we're, we're not asleep. Just. Oh. I am. <laughs> as I mean, soon as I get the uh. three hours of drinking, I probably close. <laughs> yeah, three hour after three hours of, of <laughs> si sipping on on whiskey, yeah, it's probably just like, nah, I'm done. You still have like what three or two? I, I got three. Well, plus there's more that in the bag of holding it's now too. So exhaustion. Uh, exhaustion. Oh, exa yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah three. <laughs> I'm at three. You're like you're done, so <laughs> but you have like just the last amount to pull to do up the dome again before you just. Uh, great. Could Everybody else going to sleep? Are mm. we Twig's watching? Are you gonna? Yeah, I mean Twig would keep watch. Yeah, if if Twig can keep watch, or I can keep watch for a little bit, and maybe he could, or they could try he, to. He can monitor the security shit, apparently. So. Is there any way he can interface and try to dig into the history of the the well walls and try to find like locations or thing like a log? I would imagine that there'd be a log. I'm right here. I know. I, I know. I know. Yes. <laughs> it's, um, I, I mean, <laughs> spelled like Captain's Log, not not Log Log, but does that make sense? Like a yeah. notes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, was thinking, I mean, I, I could be a captain, but like. You could be. I mean, okay. if that goblin could be a captain. Right, not? yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. That's your sister's <laughs> Yeah. I thought you were a doctor. We've met, we met. Uh, I, I am. We met. You met Captain Hurtthorn. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, I, yeah, I'll, I'll ask him. Okay, and I can, I can't fall asleep immediately, um, so but I, I will eventually. I'm just gonna sit over here and just. I get the farthest away from the door and them as possible, and try to curl up and try. Does that to... mean you want to be outside of the dome? Oh, I thought the whole room was inside. No, the, the dome is only like ten feet in diameter. If I remember. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I'll stay with whatever this dome. Ooh, ten thing foot is. radius. I ten think. foot radius. Yeah, it's yes. most of the room, but okay. it's not the entire room. It would, it, in order for the dome to be cast, it has to be able to fit in the space that it is, and because it is a, it is a, it is a hemisphere fitting in a s mostly square with rounded quarters room, the corners are not included in it. Okay. Well, I'll get to one. I'll get as far as I can away from them, and that whole thing, and. <laughs> sure, if you want to like lean up against the bed, that's yeah, part of it work. is enclosed in the dome, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just take like while Twig's starting to look for the log, um, not the log log, <laughs> but I'll just take that time, kind of sob, go turn inward, talk to my sister, basically share have that knowledge transference and, and stuff that you do a news we had update talked about. With, yeah. yeah, and just you know. It's been a day. You pull out Lammy yeah. and you use Lammy as the surrogate for the stand-in for your sister as you vent mm -hmm. uh, and eventually do succumb to sleep amid your sentences. Yeah. And so now... Argus, I don't your... think you ever wake up. I think you stay asleep after <laughs> Never the You fall asleep. Never wake <laughs> up. I think <laughs> after <laughs> the pain and everything and the exhaustion of the surgery, so once the pain the stops... No, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just you like look, you just drool once all the night. Yeah. It stops. It's just, it's like kind of just 
I thought it was a necessary medicine down. thing, so you I wouldn't have heard of it. Log, you go to sleep? Yeah. Okay. Mechel, well, you go to sleep? Everybody, yep. Is everybody going to sleep? Yeah, eventually okay. after I cry myself to sleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. I'd be right there with you, but I'm gone. Yeah, so. you're... Yeah. <laughs> okay. I roll a time dice. For the precedent of this, as far as this dome within an area that is lacking air and stuff like this, but still has air, like, you know, atmosphere or anything, I am totally okay with it being far more thick air and the temperature being warmer, as is per the spell's prerequisites. Uh, trying to cast it in the vacuum of space is an entirely different matter. Or trying to cast it on the surface of a planetoid, moon, or what have you that has no atmosphere to begin with might involve a, a check, like a, some sort of arcana check to facilitate that to make sure that, you know, air is produced or whatever, something like that, and make sure that the semi-permeable membrane is able to create some sort of airlock. Does that make sense? I think mm -hmm. I want, I'd rather leave it up to the dice in those more extreme circumstances, but this one is, I, I'm more than happy to hand to you. Is everybody okay with that? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. I think, Log, you instinctually kind of understand this as you're here, as you cast the spell again and again and again, realizing the limitations of it. Cool. You guys all get your long rest. Do I if... pull anything? Oh, Ooh. shit. <sighs> Fuck. Twig is connected. Uh, I'm sorry, you were talking about the log, correct? You wanted Twig to try to connect to the log? Yeah, to see if there were any... Well, I was figured he would do like overnight or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just something that I have to roll for. He's just trying to get locations like, and where well walls go because clearly these beings are connected to the well walls. They probably have okay. some sort of... That is of another system he does not have access to that has high security into it. So, for obvious reasons. So, I, I'm going to be rolling for him to possibly try to hack into it like he hacked into the, uh, the Construct's uh, system. That's a natural one. He is not... Uh, over the course of the night, he tries and tries and tries and eventually gets locked out Poor because funny. he tried too many incorrect passwords. Uh, so, you guys all get your long rest. You, Twig is still connected to this thing though. Yes, go ahead and roll the... Th this is just a luck check. That's why there's no advantage, no disadvantage. It's just a luck check. Correct, correct. Because that's what we decided upon after the, this change, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Eleven. Eleven. There is a moment, you don't end up back in the Rubicon Plateau in that strange kind of almost always night sky type weird tiered memory spaces. It, it has become new with that big old fetish idol like massive like totem that was there before uh, you don't end up in that space instead you find yourself uh, again within one of the pods yeah do you want to do lights oh yeah yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> drink time yeah might as well set them up might as well yeah uh, you find yourself again within one of the pods. Speaking of which, we should also do the correct music. The being that you are inhabiting, avataring, is of the same kind of constituent materials as you've seen of like the other kind of biomechanoid or something the same type of things that you had inhabited before. Mm. A different one this time, though, because it's still within the pod. You have agency within you. You are suspended in some type of liquid. The pod has not opened. Because last time there was something, like, in my throat I had to take out before I was... Uh, it is still there. So, so, so I remember last time I had put yeah. that out, and yeah. then I got released. I'll do that. You, uh, you, you pull it out. Um... There That's is, how we got out last time. Yeah, e e easily enough, you, you pull it out. It's not a pleasant experience. There is some sort of sound. You're not sure. Maybe some sort of click 
that's through liquid, you don't know. But the pod doesn't open, it doesn't drain. And, it, and it, almost like it's trying again, it tries again. It doesn't appear to be working the way it's supposed to be working. Uh, does it look like there's something obstructing it? Uh, as you look down, uh, not as far as you can tell, it does look like there's perforations in the in the in the bottom of this pod to possibly allow for drainage, but it doesn't look like anything's blocking the drain. I mean, like blocking the door or anything like. like. Uh, the, it's it's again like the way the doors are. The, it's so smooth. You're unable to find any hinges or anything. You don't even know where the seam is, where the door is. You could only remember where the seam is. You could probably remember where the seam appeared before, but you can't actually spot it physically with your eyes. It's, that's that's how smooth. And uh, this is, it's very oval, large, Velociraptor egg style or whatever. Uh, do I see any controls inside? Inside. Go ahead and roll perception check. You can do it with log stuff because it's just a little silly. Uh, but is that so disadvantage because of... No, not in this instance. Right. No. Those creatures are that was perception? Yeah. Seven. Seven. Um, everything appears to be mostly smooth within here with very little, there's like nothing to look at the most uh, out of the ordinary or even technical piece within here is the thing you just pulled out of your throat. It has a bunch of cables and stuff running through it that then goes up to the top of this pod into a darker part of the wall in the back. But it seems so flush with the wall you can Mm -hmm. uh, well, so based on where I remember the seams and all that being before, I'm just going to try and push the door. Okay. Try and manually open Go it. ahead and roll uh, an athletics check for me. I'm going to say this is not your athletics. This is the creature's athletics. Uh, this is a plus five to whatever you roll. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, you begin to push and push, and you do feel like the stress sounds of metal or glass bending and giving way slightly, but nothing pops open. Uh. What you do notice while as you're pushing through is the, because you're on the other side, the reverse of the engraved inscription uh, on the outside of the pod that you can read from the inside of the pod because it's translucent slash tra transparent. Uh, you're able to read it fully. Uh, it, it says Engineer 601. Uh. Reserve population. I'm going to try to, using this, the thing that was hanging down, the thing that was in my throat before, I'm going to try and use that somehow to smash through the glass. Okay, cool. Go ahead and roll another athletics check. Plus five, 14 this time. 14. Uh, was It was 13 before, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, you try again. Again, you feel like the waning and, and the, some... It's... It's... It seems like it's meant to be able to take quite a bit of stress and damage before breaking because these feel like they were constructed in order to make sure that the people within were safe. So this, you're not sure of what you can do from within here. Uh, what you are able to see through the pod is other pods. And you also notice that you don't seem to be in the place that you were before, like you were within the core before. You're in a different place with a bunch of other pods. It doesn't seem to have a gantry that goes all the way up and down. There are fewer pods here, but they all do line the wall as far as the ceiling goes up about like 20 feet. Uh, you do know quite of these pods, few of these pods are empty. Um, you're one of the fewer pods that have people within them. You also see, at the very least out of the corner of your eye, a larger kind of alcove that digs in that looks like it's some sort of docking station for some type of thing. Uh, it is some partially collapsed as you see some sort of, again, strangely helixed and mostly hollow mechanoid thing that has been crushed by part of the wall and the structure of this alcove falling in on it that looks to be non-functional. You don't appear to be in the core anymore. This is somewhere else. It, it, and by looking at the cameras, this looks similar to where you saw LEAs are deposited as well. 
I'm going to try and just tell the door to open. How do you tell the door to open? Fuck her open! In common? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know that I can speak whatever. I, I've read it, but sure. I don't know what it sounds like. Sure. But, but I'm, 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 I'm thinking it, too. Like, I'm both saying it out loud, and I'm, like, thinking. Okay, cool, yeah. The, uh, the body that you're in, you notice, doesn't have, like, a mouth. So you think it. And what... You don't hear anything. You hear, like... You, you hear, like, the phantom sound of what it is that you might say, but you don't think you actually hear anything. But some sort of signal does go out, or you feel like your thought is projected as there is some sort of as the the pod begins to drain and once it's finished draining the pod cracks open just a slight bit I'll try and see fucker open and it opens <laughs> so yeah so I'll try and actually exit um go ahead and roll a perception check as you exit real quick uh the perception here is better than your perception the, again, this is a plus five. It was not one, so six. Six. I think you're probably not used to this body as you kind of stumble onto your knees and you can only kind of see what's in front of you and the floor. You pull yourself back up and as you spin around or, or just become a little bit of trying to get your bearings, you notice not too far, about 40 feet from in your left direction, down a little bit uh, from this wide docking bay hallway, is one of the constructs that appears to not facing you, but in the process of turning in your direction. What do you do? Uh, sorry, so the, there was... Across the hallway from you, there's pods and what appears to be docking bays. Uh, a few of them have collapsed in and the constructs within them have been destroyed. On your side, there are more pods and again, Docking bays on the left side is where more of the docking bays of the constructs are. In terms of somewhere to like get to and like duck behind, there's either you can either go left or right. Uh, the hallway is mostly uh, that's a good point. The hallway is mostly Spartan and vacant. You do notice over to the right, there appear to be a couple supply boxes that are up against the wall near a bulkhead door. Uh. I'll decide if I want to jump back in mine and pretend like I'm damaged or just go hide. Uh, you said it was down which direction? The construct? Uh, the left is where the docking bays and that current construct is turning. It's like in the center of the hallway. It's currently turning in a clockwise direction toward your side, toward you. It's on your left. So I'm just going to go down the right and try and find something. Yeah, there's not too far going down the right. I'd say there's only about... 40 feet to go down the right before you reach a bulkhead that is closed and a couple supply crates that are... Are there any open pods right there? Ooh, uh, that's a good question. Um, There are... There is a non-functional platform within it. Uh, There's one that's open. There is a non-functional. Like the uh, when the when the when the pods are opened, and especially if they have damaged things within them or they are damaged, rather than the blue light that is cast within all of them, it's more of just like a gray poof, nothingness. So there's like a gray nothingness, and the pod is open, and there's a defunct kind of crumpled body or platform that's standing almost only only partially within it. This is dumb because I know it's going to make sound, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go down there and I'm going to just like rip that one out and I'm going to like stand in its place and just... And you want to close the door or keep it open? I'll leave it open. Leave it open? Uh, what are you going to do with the, the the defunct body? I'm just throwing it out into just the hallway. Shoo shoo. Uh, into the hallway? Sure. Because um, if it makes me claim, then it's going to expect, inspect that. And cool. You know what I'll do? I'll give you advantage on your stealth check. Again, this thing has a plus five. To all of its abilities, it has a plus five. Or skills. So advantage, that's a 23. 23. Um, yeah, so you kind of ching, 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 run over to that thing, pull it out real quick, kind of slide it across the ground real quick, hop in, and just lean up against it. The patrolling construct comes by, comes to the end, turns back around, and continues down the hallway. There's much more room down the other side of the hallway as you see it begin to walk hundreds and hundreds of feet down the hallway. Uh, and I recognize this as where it looks like Eleazar might have been. It looks 
similar to the docking station that you saw there. Granted, you don't know how many of there they are. You don't know where you are in them, but this looks very similar. It has the same kind of layout. Uh. I'm going to... Also, while you're standing there uh, from the open door of this pod, you can read what's on the pod. It says uh, uh, Ensign 702. Emergency personnel. Uh, is there anything that looks like an interface? Roll perception check. Plus five. Everything I say, just roll plus five for. 21. Uh, 21. Uh, you notice as you step out, now that you feel like you're a little safer, because this thing is much farther away now. As I had mentioned before, there are no like terminals that you can see. Granted, there's your, little, your instincts are a little different here as you're able to now read some of the script around here. One of the things that you're noticing as you're going around and seeing the defunct pods that are open and they're the ones that are damaged, almost there are about seven pods within gazing length that you distance that you can see that are open and defunct and destroyed. From those that you can tell the script of, all of them say emergency personnel on them. As far as a terminal is, the closest thing to a terminal you can understand actually sits upon the actual construct itself that is within some of the destroyed uh, pods because that's, there is one what appears to be not, like not turned on uh, but possibly functional uh, construct that is, they're very large. We're talking about like mech warrior style, like not, well, not that big, but you get the idea. Like large creatures uh, that are within these docking stations. One appears to be, the blue light is still on, so we know it's like possibly functional, but it's not on. And you can see uh, on possibly where its haptum is, which is a little bit more solid, you see some type of script and terminal. But on the walls themselves, you don't see anything. It's very smooth. It's very, it's like super futuristic uh, uh, mid-century modern spaceship style. Uh, so that one, it's in a, it's in a closed tube. It, it, it's not closed. It's, it's, it's an open. alcove. Uh, it's open to the air. It's just standing there, as if Seven of Nine would be standing there charging. But, like, in the alcove upon, a, like, a wireless charger platform. To fuck with it or to not fuck with it? Because uh, I'm going to go to the terminal thing you say that is on it. Okay. Uh, you have about five to ten minutes before this thing you gather gets to the end of the hallway and then comes back. Uh, so I'm gonna, because I don't know how any of this shit works, I'm just gonna, like, touch it and just think, Dweg, are you there? Um, it doesn't matter what I call this, so just roll with d20 and pl add plus <laughs> five. <laughs> so, 21 again. 21, um, you hear <laughs> which are sounds that you've heard Twig make. The thing doesn't turn on, but it does look like it becomes powered. But it doesn't seem to be moving. But you hear some sort of Twig-like response. Uh, where... Where am I, and where is Eleazar? You're so, you're so lucky you activated this thing and had them come through this thing because they would get advantage on it, and their first roll was a natural one. So uh, they come through this thing. Uh, there, the construct moves a little bit as the arms kind of open a little bit. And the helix of this kind of faceplate, I don't even want to call it a faceplate, there's just a helix of the front body. I really should draw this for you. Part of the helix is detach and then widen open to have some sort of screen or keyboard style that is between the two pieces of detached thin helix, metal type of thing. In the middle of this keyboard is a viewfinder screen of which you can see 
Eleazar in a pod off from a camera. And then it zooms out and shows you a three-dimensional rotating out map. And then shows you a beeping marker. On either side of this image or video that you're seeing, it looks like a keyboard for each of your hands that has a bunch of different types of script of the script that you're familiar with. You can read it. It is not necessarily alphabet, but the equivalent as to what you could understand in a referential type of language. But you can read it. You can understand it. Uh, and I, when using that, would I be able to navigate to based on that 3D map? You could. The route does lead you right through this patrolling thing. Of course. Uh... But I would say you would be able to remember where it would be within the ship given this map because it is highly detailed. It also means that Twig now has this in its memory. Uh, so between the controls I have and through Twig, can, can you shut that other fucker down? Can you, can you like disable them for for a while? Uh, you say that out loud, and then you realize like, oh yeah, I know how to type this, and you just start to like put in commands to try to do that. Uh, Twig in this thing starts to respond. It's trying. It's hitting a bunch of uh, problematics or like air gaps, it, almost as if once the constructs are activated and they're in working order, they're disconnected from the network and any command type of capacity for security reasons so that people can't do exactly what it is that you're trying to do. <laughs> people have, the, the people who constructed this thing thought of a lot to make sure that this thing was very, very safe, uh, that, they, that their technology could not be used against them. Uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is have it take whatever like blaster arm that it's it got had these before. strange like i said metal or stone kind of black ish spires that are uh from all of the, the best i can say the elbow joints of this cone like spires that apparently become like programmable matter like icker and transform into whatever it is they need what i want to attempt to do is have it aim at the thing and once it makes its turnaround to come back this way, blast it. I understand. You want to pre-program this thing while it's still in its docking station to do an action before you set it off in its way. Like right. those little programmable RC cars that you tell to do a <laughs> bunch of stuff, and then you did they just do the thing. Right. Uh, oh God, I remember those. They had a little. Oh, they were they were so much fun. Uh, sure. Roll another thing. It doesn't matter what it is. That the plus five. <laughs> Ooh, uh, that's going to be a 22. Uh, 22. You feel like you've done that um, while you're doing that. Uh, a bunch of other information comes up telling you how many constructs are in this particular hallway that are functional, and there's about nine. As far as other docking stations, you don't know how many there are and you don't know how many are functional within those docking stations. You also are able to tell that it's like nine out of 30 that are functional within here. So if there are multiple docking stations, this thing is jam packed with uh, anywhere between a nations and a planet's worth of, of stuff, people, constructs, everything. It's, this is like an arc. You yeah. understand as you're going through there and you see like a byline in the code that there is a fail safe where if one starts to shut down, one of the emergency signals that sends to it starts another one up. Which means you have a very slim margin of error to get from one place to another once one shuts down because it immediately starts to spin up. You also don't know what's going to happen to this one that you programmed to do the thing that you told it to do once it's done doing its thing. It might revert to its previous programming. 
So it's up to you whether you want to press start on this button. Painlog's not that smart. <laughs> 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 Granted, you're not in Log's body right, right. now. You have Log's consciousness. Uh. The uh, the common sense and understanding and insight of the body that you're in has a, f a little bit of a deeper understanding to this type of function. As far as, so, it, do whatever Cody would do. Well, basically, yeah, no, if, if either one or both of these things can be damaged to the point where if we have to face them, they're damage and it appears so it appears that even like part of the wall falling in on them with enough weight destroys it sorry so if they if i can make it so they destroy destroy or partially destroy each other before we gotta deal with it i'm gonna do that <laughs> okay cool uh so you pew, press the initiate button this thing starts to spin up you back out of the way as it begins to it takes a moment about like 30 seconds, and then it begins to walk out, turn its spire down the hallway as this thing begins to turn around, turn into that kind of plasma cannon that you'd saw previously. I want to go duck somewhere. Uh, yeah, you're behind <laughs> it. You're not worried about it. <clears throat> Fires at it, critical hit, that thing just disappears. This thing now looks like it's thinking as the beam kind of retracts back into its arm. What are you doing? Uh, fuck. Uh, I'm going to try and tell it to go dormant. If you remember, what I told you was that once they're activated, they're air gapped from the network. They're no longer connected and they just go along their base programming. So you try to tell it to do something. You don't feel like your message has re re uh, reached it. Uh... And I'm just going to book it down the hallway. <laughs> You're going to run past it and book it down the hallway? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. It is, at the moment, reconciling what has just happened with its programming. You go ahead and roll an athletics check again. Just a plus five to see how fast you can make this body run. I mean, as soon as I feel like I'm far away enough and can duck behind something, then I'm going to do that. There's like, uh, well, there's a little bit of rubble-ish, but yeah, sure, go ahead. So, dirty 20. Dirty 20. You move like the fucking wind. It's insane how fast this thing moves. Every every stride is about 15 feet. As you, <laughs> this thing is the $7 million man is how fast you're just moving down this. You reach the end of the hallway in within six seconds, and it's several hundred feet down there you flash your way down there. You're at the door. Uh, the bulkhead is closed. Trying to go tell it to open. Yeah, o you open, tell it to open. You take the hand and pew, pl place it on the part of the terminal, similar to what was on the, the core bulkhead. The door opens, and you girl had de dexterity saving throw as you... Plus here five, from 13. 13. Uh, you duck out of the way as much as you can. One of your legs gets caught in the beam, and it just disappears. You are now hobbling on one leg and hopping as the the bulkhead closes behind you and you hear coming from down the hallway. You don't know how fast this thing moves, but you're on one leg and you're moving. You have the map. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to Eleazar. Okay, cool. You're moving. You're hopping along in this location. Uh, there's no way you're going to get there before this thing catches up <laughs> to you on one leg, but uh, if there's any type of shenanigans you'd want to try to pull, you let me know now. I don't know what this thing is capable of. Uh, One way to find out. And and then so the hallway I'm in now, are there more of the these dormant constructs? Uh, no, this is more of a in between, like a, 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 a just a not a Jeffrey's tube, a just the hallway. How There's tall nothing is, against the wall? How tall is the ceiling? It's the same as the halls you were traveling through in order to get to the crew quarters before. It's about 10 to anywhere between 10 and 15 feet tall, depending on the ventilation shafts, Jeffrey's tubes, and all the other stuff that's going on here. About, again, and about 10 to 15 feet wide. Uh, what's going on. It's a bit of a lab labyrinthine maze to get. If you didn't have this map, you would no way you'd be able to get in there. You're hobbling while you're doing this, but what are you doing? Uh, you hop, and you hop 10 feet every time you hop. Yeah, I'm just going to just keep booking it. Uh, you are well aware that 
Well, and once, once I think the, the mundanely, the, this thing will catch up to you. Once I think that the bulkhead is open and that like it's gonna, sure. I'm just gonna like, just like drop like I just had an malfunction and I'm just inert. Okay. Uh, you want to feign the death and dysfunction? Yeah. Cool. Go ahead and roll a either stealth. Or, well, it doesn't matter. Just roll d20. I have to think. <laughs> and add five. And add five. Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, you hear the bulkhead open, lean up against one of the walls, and just kind of feign death and shut down and go limp. Dead weight. This thing does eventually catch up to you, looks at you, takes a moment, examines. You see one of the spires change to what looks like some sort of claw hand, and grabs you delicately and picks you up and begins to turn around and head back to where you were. Uh, how close am I in? Because oh, its control panel doesn't work anymore. Is there anything that looks uh, vulnerable on it? You see the control at? panel on this thing. But trying to control the other one didn't really work before, and I've learned that. Not the uh, uh, commands, verbal and telepathic commands. I'm just going to try to fucking break the control panel then. You're going to break the control panel? Yeah. Um, go ahead and roll an attack at advantage. <laughs> Five bonus plus three, so plus eight. And I want to make this a D10 plus five. Well, so the 19, if I'm rolling out advantage, it's 19 on the die plus eight, so. Yeah, you hit. You absolutely hit. So go ahead and, and the, but the damage die is a D10 plus five. Ten. Ten. Uh, you shove your one remaining leg just into the control panel, you get a feedback loop of some sort of, you're not sure if it's electrical circuit or whatever, you don't know, but you're both made of the same type of material, the construct and you, mostly. So it does conduct between both of you. There's some sort of either short circuit or transfer of data or something. You get some images of Cole's face at a terminal, at a couple of these constructs typing like the way you were, you get an image of Eliezer being uploaded into this thing and seeing that the chest is moving back and forth as if it's still breathing, like he's still alive and just in suspended animation. You get the image of some type of countdown clock that you can read you don't know you don't know the translation conversion rate as to far as how they measure time and you measure time you can understand what it says but me explaining it to you wouldn't help you so i'm not even going to bother as far as the conversion rate there's no way to give you a basis because neither does the knowledge of it or you able to communicate in any way that would make uh, transferable sense so but there is some sort of countdown clock going as well you also uh, see some sort of hexagonal metal object that appears to sit upon, similar to like the core pillar that was in the core before that you had saw, but there appears to be like a pedestal or something before it that wasn't in the blue macrolith that you are certainly in the lights around rather than being blue ambient are green ambient and then both of these things you feel short circuit <laughs> and shut down as the electrical circuit over overloads both of you and you wake up you receive a long rest 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 Woo! you get to remove a point of exhaustion so do you you guys get all your hit points back. You get half of your hit dice back, rounded down. Oh, I'm sorry. Last thing, Log, that you also see is uh, there something triggered some sort of emergency protocol as some code goes through you in the script that you quickly try to scan. And it's, it's way too much information. You can't read it all, but you get the gist of it because your brain is a little inflated right now with all of the information. 
that it says some sort of emergency protocol was activated due to unauthorized transportation, uh, due to unauthorized dimensional transportation within the core uh, and has unlocked several, the best word you can understand from this is escape pods. It says personal escape pods. That's it. You guys wake up. Uh, no day-night cycle because of the way things work here. Uh, I saw Cole. He he was here. Like I mean, I know I know we saw before the screens. He was no, but I saw Cole. He was. I, I had a, I had, a, I had a dream. Okay. Uh, I was in another one of those things that you know were all around. Yeah. Uh, I got out. I, I made one thing kill, try to kill another thing. Then it tried to kill me. But then I kicked it, and I had a vision. Okay. And in this vision, I saw Cole. And he was typing like I was, when I was making the thing kill the other thing. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and I saw Eleazar. Is she still drunk? <laughs> Uh, is, is he? Well, now, you now play probably, Log so well. <laughs> <laughs> and now I probably would have woken up looking like Log for the, oh, the okay. first time that you have right, seen. Right, yeah. Him. Oh, yeah. Who is that? That's, that, that's big, furry, six foot and some change. <laughs> seven, 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 and seven, seven, five. Seven <laughs> foot and a half, tall, furry, fanged, almost like goblin kin ish looking creature. You know from my memories who he is. Yeah. Uh, oh, but, y- yeah. Um, probably momentarily jarring at that. <laughs> Michael yeah, no, resists I... the urge to pet him. And, uh, Jesus. <laughs> Please don't pet him or me. Thank you. Oh, did I say that out loud? Sorry, <laughs> yeah. I'm still waking up. It's okay. But, but, but I, I, know where, <laughs> I know where Eleazar is now. Oh, okay. Uh, there is also a, a, a countdown... Uh, which I'm not sure what that means. Okay. Uh, and uh, there's there's pods. They're like pods. There there there's some some bad shits happened, and because because someone transported in the core, now there's pods to escape and a countdown. Okay. I don't know what that means, but. Well, we need to figure out the countdown exactly. Escape pods might be more helpful than, you know, trying to go back the way that we did. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know how we can get back in there. I don't want to do that space shit again. That was weird. (laughs) (laughs) That was weird. But you being within these creatures, manipulating crap, and blowing stuff up. That's not weird. I mean, have you never been inside something else before? I mean, like, just, you know. I have, but only a piece of me. (laughs) Do you have any food? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I'll give you some Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll go over and look at the painting while I'm eating. <laughs> sure. You see the pastoral landscape. Um, you, you can see that now that you're looking able to look closer, a couple more details is probably some other humanoids of the same fashion farther in the distance that are just kind of more of like black lines because of the way you do impressionist type of distance and that type of thing. As I'm okay. eating these. I'm assuming it's like salt tack, which is awesome. Um, you guys have a bunch of road food that lasts a lot. Oh, road mm-hmm. food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that sounds even Any, better. Well, I mean, like um, anything that from jerky that is per, yeah. any preserved, like smoked, salted type of things that last for quite a while. Food. There are some dried things as well. All right. As I'm, I, I'll like, can that painting be taken off the wall? You want to try? Nonchalantly with one hand as I'm eating with the other one. I have priorities. Um, you touch it a bit, and it does go askew. All right, I'll pull it down. Uh, you roll an athletic check for me. You're just rolling straight now, right? No, I had two levels. Two, yeah. I'm, I'm faster at, at it. I'm faster at now messing stuff two? up. Now I'm at two. Jeez. Don't uh, shake your head at me. <laughs> athletics check, huh? Oh, I got a six. A six. Um, you are able to move it askew, but it it won't come like off. 
which is odd to you. It doesn't make sense because usually you can lift it and it comes off. You can't lift it up. You can rotate it though. Okay, I'm going to go over to the pack that I, of coals that I've been carrying. Sure. And pull out the crowbar. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah. And you want to do okay, it again? You might fit that advantage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Try to like crush. as you pit, fit like the crowbar up top to try to because that's where it's the 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 axis of rotation. What, what did is coming you say, Trishani? I said, okay, you might fit in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, about the top middle, where like kind of the frame is, uh-huh. is where the axis of rotation is. So you try to stick it in there, and you feel <laughs> the crowbar get pulled in and like get stuck to it. Uh, I don't think you've experienced anything like this before, but you would know, and Trishendi would know. This is lodestone style magnetism. So this thing is know? sticking to it. It's a very I, strong I may magnet. Have s- well, he, he meant memories. Um, uh, yeah, maybe. Argus? Yeah? I'm stuck. <laughs> I mean, what? you can let go of the crowbar. Yeah, I know, but... <laughs> I'll go over there. What are you stuck on? What are you trying I'll to do? I'll let go of the crowbar. Just I... sticks out of the wall up on top, partially behind the Just painting. Just trying to see if the painting will come down. Chomp, chomp, chomp. <laughs> um, and the crowbar got stuck. We can't leave without a crowbar. I'm pretty sure we have others. <laughs> Is this a holy crowbar? It's not holy. Okay. It's a silver crowbar for a reason. Mm-hmm. We'll go over that later. <laughs> All right. Well, can you see if you can grab it, the painting? Yeah, or I can try to grab it off. Uh, Go ahead and roll athletics check. I'll, can you I'll reach the back. crowbar? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, dirty 20. Dirty 20. You're, you, it's a little taller than you can reach. So you just, hop, and use your weight and your armor, just pull it down as the force exerts and causes the leverage to change. The crowbar kind of flips and the hooked part perforates the painting a bit, but the painting and the crowbar do become free as they clatter to the ground. As you see the crowbar, the painting's now face down, the, and the hook of the crowbar is through the back of the painting, uh, sitting there on the ground. So what do you want this for? What's on the wall now? Is it just a blank wall? There looks to just be some sort of rectangle, a dark rectangle that appears to be some sort of plated magnet that was just sitting there. And there's one on the back of the frame of the painting, because it was apparently held up there by a very strong magnet. Nothing behind it, just still the smooth wall continues. All right, well, the painting has lost my interest. I'll rip the uh, <laughs> magnet off the back of the painting. <laughs> okay, roll an athletics check. I'll take the painting out to the frame. Whoa. Um, all right. Uh, apparently I wanted a uh, 15 on that. 15. Uh, you get a little frustrated with this, and you see some of your fingers begin to melt and turn into that odd musculature as they seep into the tiny, 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 almost microscopic creases of where the magnet sits into the embossment of the frame to give yourself leverage as you pop this thing out and become hyper-focused on it, and you pop this rectangular magnet lodestone out. Did Argus have any gloves? He's got a yes, shiny many, one. Yes, many, many, many. Yes, and he does have a one. shiny sequin one as well. I do. Have. Log pulls out the shiny sequin one. Why would he have my glove? <laughs> yeah, I don't have it. I'll he go totally to Cole's have. bag and see if there's a pair of gloves I can. I got tons. There's just dwarf gloves. And besides this one, there's a bunch <laughs> of gloves. Uh, a bright book. Correct. The only gloves that would fit you would be the human ones, because everybody else is a completely different size. Coles would probably be your best bet. Uh, he does have gloves. They are for warmer weather, as per his uh, environment in which he grew up in. I don't care. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to put on the gloves. They're kind of like deer skin, uh, deer skin leather on the outside and deer uh, fur on the inside. All right, I'm gonna put the uh, magnet or the lodestone into the or the. It is magnetized, or it's, it's a just magnet. Metal? It's just that the term, the old term for a magnet, is a lodestone. Okay. Uh, and see if anybody noticed my hands. 
What uh, the change in the hand? I believe I'd be the only one. You'd probably be the only one to but notice. I also know what it is. <laughs> yeah. It was very momentary. So you throw the, the magnet, the lodestone, into the bag of holding? No, 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 into Cole's bag. Into Cole's bag. Are you carrying Cole's bag now? Yeah. Okay, replace him, why don't you? Um, so you are you throw it into your bag. You do hear it like uh, connect to a couple things. <laughs> okay. And that's it. All right. Uh, the, the painting is face down with a hole through the middle. Oh, it's you yeah, you're taking it. I'm taking the painting. Do you want to take it off the frame, or are you yeah, taking the frame? Yeah, taking it off. The, the cool. Frame. You easily enough can take it off the frame, roll it up, throw it in your bag. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So, so I'm taking it out. A, the canvas is not canvas, as far as you can understand. It's some sort of other material. It's more that's like the, similar. the hang in there poster <laughs> that I had. Have. Uh, not quite paper, pl like plastic coated paper, or like like because that was more of our world. But it's some sort of familiarly either vel vellum or canvas material, but nothing that you've seen before because it obviously was made of foreign flora or fauna or whatever. Okay, well, shove it in the bag of holding. Just might as well. Yeah, For so, a little bit. That bag is gonna. We've got five days. Okay. We've got to figure out how to get. How to is it. your arm? It's so. It's I don't know. Log, log, perception check, please. How does my arm feel? It feels like it's asleep. Like that tingly feeling. You can still feel it, it there. It feels like my fingers. I would say it's that really Itchy. not quite painful, but equivalent to painful feeling when your uh, appendage fully falls asleep. It feels like a piece of wood. And then it begins to come back, and as your nerves begin to come back, it's so gosh darn uncomfortable that it's almost unbearable. It's just like, ah, please, please, just come back already. And it's in that in-between state, but it's constantly in that between state. So it's kind of torturous. But you could still move it. Just feels really fucked up when you do so. Yeah. Disadvantage four. Four. Dome's gone. Room looks the looks the same. So, like, wherever I was, there, there also were nine, uh, not, like, actually up there, but I just, I could sense that there were nine of those those things that mm -hmm. blasted Eleazar. Uh, okay. I mean, I, like I said, I took one of them out. Actually, I took two of them out. Uh, nice. Yeah, it, yeah, it was, it was kind of cool. Yeah. I could run really fucking fast <laughs> and, until it took one of my legs, or, you know, just an ankle, but okay. until then, it was really cool. That, that is cool, but that still leaves seven, so we... Yeah, and that, that was just, like, in that area. Okay. I, th I, think there, I, think, I think there might be more. All right. We need to move. We need to find out. You said you have... You know the way to Eliezer? Yeah. Yeah, if there's... Tw Twig's got a map. Okay. What are we going to do about Zendak? <sighs> He's in the box, right? He is in the box. He's in the box. I, I can try my shatter thing now. If you want to get your hammer back, at least. If I really just wanted my hammer back, I could burn it. Yeah. Because fire eats through tears. And yeah. My problem is being able to move him around without an object is the hard part. Well, he, yeah. I mean, we could wrap him in that silk stuff. Do we want the to? bed things. I mean, he's in the box right now, so he's okay, but do we want to try bringing him back and see if... Log, can we ask Twig to see how much time has passed from when we saw him stop twitching to when we tried to revive him to see if we have any... You could always use what I taught you and ask a different being if we can even accomplish it. Uh, we can try. I think it's going to be a while before Twig can respond. Okay. But it's worth a shot. Because I can't remember in augury. Do you have like a, is there a limit? Or? I just think it just gets more. harder the more you do it, I think. But now, now it's a new day, so. Is the same as the, was, was the week. Did you get a full rest then? Mm -hmm. Two? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, my dream is just 
dream, but I still rest. Before completing your next long rest. Okay. Yeah, so since it's a new day, it should be good. Yeah. Might be worthwhile figuring out how or if we can. That's what I worry about. Do you do you have diamonds on yeah. you? Okay, cool. All right, so we're okay there. We need to get the gang back together. <laughs> so we have okay. a question for Twig. Sure. How oh, much time has passed since you saw Zemdak stop twitching from the external sensor cameras, correct? Yes. Okay. And, and then when, from when he got encased. We got it. And how long does Augury take? Uh, like 10 minutes. Okay, during that time I'll cast Find Familiar and get Shakar back too. While you're Twig that. pulls up the security footage of the external cameras. You see Zemdak twitching for just a few moments, just very, 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 very short, just a few seconds before the camera stops giving data and puts a bunch of script there that looks somewhat red, like some sort of alert. As if you're familiar, has said there was some sort of protocol that initiated some sort of emergency protocol when some sort of a typical non-authorized teleportation occurred within the core and external sensors, the power of the external sensors must have been repurposed to be put somewhere else as that has no more data to give you. Uh, has Twig rolled a natural one? <laughs> Yeah, so... Oh, speaking of which, um, insight for me, please, at advantage. So just straight roll? Yes, please. <laughs> One of these days I'm not going to be... I know. <laughs> 15, wait, it was insight? Oh, yeah, we can go on now. Yeah, just so 15. You feel a familiar sensation when you're looking at this text that that shows a warning upon the camera that you're familiar with when you read the Eldritch text of like, you don't really know what it says, but for some reason you instinctively know the gist of it, which is why you understand it as, oh, that's some sort of emergency thing, that's why it stopped. Well, I was gonna ask, like, now that I'm out of the dream, do I recognize it, do I? Uh, there is some sort of fleeting information that appears to be like remembering a dream that's slowly uh, drifting away like grains of sand in an hourglass. But you are able to understand, you kind of get the gist of it, which is surprising to you in the moment. Very similar to the feeling when you reach your, the Eldritch script. And actually, while you're looking at it, this is odd for Log to be able to do because not a linguist, not the smartest tool, in, not the sharpest tool in the shed, but there are some noticeable similarities between the script. They're not the same, but there's some noticeable similarities. And you are able to tell them that. Yeah, so I'll relay all that. And you, and you wanted to ask uh, my, my thing something? Well, I want to know if we try to revive Zemdak, if it's possible. All right. Get them out of the Terrazine somehow and... With our current powers. I can try. What is it that you're attempting? Uh, so I'm going to try and cast Augury again. Okay. Uh, to ask okay. if, with our current powers... Here's the deal. I'm going to let you know right now. You're casting it ritually, correct? It takes mm -hmm. you about ten minutes to cast that. The amount of time that it takes to cast that is the amount of time that this information being able to read or understand this script is going to take to fully fleet and escape your mind. Uh, so you can either, so just so you're aware, if you choose to cast the spell in this moment, you will no longer be able to read the script. You have about 10 minutes of understanding the gist of things before it's gone. You read what you need, we don't need this round. Trishani was able to, uh, and Zemdek together, putting their minds together, were able to just understand the very cusp of certain things. Could, but that was it. Now that more time has passed and allowing the nanites to do their thing with creating more pathways, could I? I'm gonna save you some energy on that. The nanites do not 
teach you the history of these people, which is necessary for the referential language. Mm -hmm. As I was talking about, similarly to the Star Trek language of at Tanagra yeah. type of thing, it requires okay. a poetic, historical, referential, previous cultural knowledge in order to understand. The being in which he was in seemed to have had that pre-programmed or pre-experienced as he shared a mind with it in the moment with gotcha. his conscious controlling it. And some of that has bled over and like a dream escaping his mind is still there. Similarly to how you guys are kind of permanently there uh -huh. given that one moment in time. So everything that happens after isn't shared. Right. But this one's a little more fleeting. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Um. While she's ritually casting that, I might have an idea. He. Yeah. If oh, you're casting. Oh, no. yeah. And I'm getting Shakar back. Okay. While right. this and is and happening. you have the incense for that, correct? Yeah. So I, I need an answer from you real quick. Sorry, before I get that. Is that, are you doing this spell or are you trying to, or, or are you retaining this knowledge for the 10 minutes that you have it? Uh, I mean, because we don't need to get him out like right the second, right? So. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, so, yeah, so I'll try and retain and read. Yeah, Maybe the only we'll script in this shit. room is that small piece of script that's on the opposite side of the room. We'll get that to that in a moment. Go ahead, okay. if that's what you're headed towards. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so, you you guys, you think uh, Eliezer is alive? Eliezer. Eliezer. He said he's my right. accent. <laughs> <laughs> it may uh, actually it makes a lot of sense for Meckel to just get everybody's name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Um, uh, no, because he's, he's in a tube. He's in a tube, but I, he, the tube is keeping him alive. I think that's, I think that's kind of what they do. So they killed him with that beam thing. Or is it death, or did they take him and but put him somewhere else? What I'm saying is, can we do the same thing with Zemdek? Have the thing shoot Zemdek, and then he'll appear in one of these things and start breathing? I don't know what he's encased in. Well, I mean, we can remove that, right? I mean, but we also don't know where, which tube he's going to end up in. There's a, there's a lot of fucking tubes. And so that's, that's a lot of fucking tubes to search for. Don't know how to get them out of tubes. To be clear, just so that we don't uh, get this wrong moving forward, they aren't cylinders like tubes. They are like, I, I know you're just referencing yeah, that, and that's that. fine. <laughs> just, yeah. But just as far as the mental imagery that we're understanding, it's more of like long oval spheroids. Uh, similar to types of long dinosaur eggs type pods, if that makes sense. A little flatter on one side, but very futuristic, that kind of stuff. I don't know how we're going to get him out of there. So by having another person that we don't know how to get out of there is probably not the best idea. But I'm wondering if that will bring him back. Because if they destroyed... I don't think they destroyed Eleazar. I think they just sent him somewhere else. So I don't know if this tube would bring them back to life or not. Oh. With Zemdak technically being dead. Yeah, they seem to be doing some kind of patrol thing. I don't know, that's how to time it to make the one thing shoot the other thing. And, yeah, there's... So I think that's what they're doing is, like, patrol. Were you able to breathe? Uh, I, I didn't really have to. Uh... I didn't. I didn't really have a mouth. Uh, I don't know, it, it was. It was weird. Could run really fucking fast though. That part was cool. I eat Why another piece of jerky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea. You were headed over to the script. Yeah. Totally. Uh, All right. Um. The script says emergency evacuation. So yeah, the, the, the thing says what I saw in my dream. The, I think that's the thing that the teleport in the core triggered this emergency evacuation, which is what the, the pods, I think, are for. Uh, but we don't know how to get out of the pods. I think, I think those are different. Those are the tubes, not the Pod, I think the, the tubes and the pods, I think, are separate. Uh, fuck, that's probably what the countdown is. 
ejecting the tubes or the pods. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't know what time means to this. It could be blowing up this whole lab for all we know. I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. We have no concept of how to get. Do you have any concept of how to get Eliezer out of there? Uh, I just told the door to fucking open, uh, and then it did. Um, I, I don't know if that will work again. Maybe with Dweg. Uh, who's, who's Dweg? But I, but I think I know where he is. I think we're hard to remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just... Agree. I uh, screwed up again, and I thought it was ten minutes, not an hour. And I'm a silly cat, so. Oh I'm yeah, just, I'm familiar. Yeah, so I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to do that right now. Trisha, yeah. not doing that right now. Well, well, if it's ritual, then it's an hour, ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and if it's not ritual, it's an hour. Yeah. So Trisha, not doing still that. Still a very Sorry. long time. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, that's fine. Because yeah. You stand in the room, recently awoken, unsure what to do. The frame, now lodestoneless, just sitting on the floor. The bed, now sheetless. Parts of the floor now looks like most of it has regenerated, become almost whole from the ditches that you had dug before. Log is standing next to some of the script that he has said says emergency evacuation upon one of the very smooth walls of the room. The air here is still thin and cold. You're not quite sure, but perhaps thinner than before? You don't know. It could just be your acclimation from being before in the, in the uh, hut? You don't know. Uh, can I tell... From what I picked up last night, uh, how far, like, distance time-wise we are from Eliezer. Uh, yeah, if you want to pull up Twig's map, it is, as far as you can tell, farther than you were before when you had woken up in your dream, which was still quite far. It's not, it's, it's. N- Can I help him, like, try to triangle, triangulate to? I mean, this, you have or? the map. There's no type okay. of triangulating. You can see where you are and you can see where that is. The thing that occurs to you instinctually, just as all of you are looking at this, is that's quite a lot of distance to cover with the possible chance of coming into contact with one of those constructs along the way. The amount of distance you had to cover between the Sky Lounge and the crew quarters was much, much, much shorter distance. This could take an hour or two walking in order to get there, even okay. if you were running, which then means more sound and all these other things. It is not close. This vessel is massive. It is on the par of the same size of the Eberveld macrolith that is hanging from Thulmor bed, which is also quite massive. Something where it is able to house all of the royal families, all of the staff, and still has a good 60% of it that is entirely unexplored. There's not enough oxygen. No. You're the only one who still has a bubble head. Yeah. It's 24 hours, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Even dead. I know. He's saving your life. <laughs> How... It's too far for us to get there. We don't know what air's still there. This is the only place we've found any air. Right. I don't want to leave him behind, but I don't see another option. I don't want to lose you trying to save him. Yeah. I do like you better. (laughs) (laughs) It's. There has to be a way for us to get back here at some point. I mean, we, we've, we've gone back here once no, before. No, just honesty. Uh, no, There's no with, disrespect with, there. I know. It's just the, the, with 
M- it makes sense for Mechel. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got it back here before. It's keeping him alive. Uh, if these things have been here as long as they have, hopefully he stays in this Passive stasis? perception 20? Yes. The window, because apparently the planetoid you're on moves in space, yeah. uh, you can now see off in the distance what looks like a tiny small ring off in the distance that is outside, uh, probably the one that you came through. One of the well walls is kind of floating in space that appears to be in some sort of orbit, uh, geosyncratic orbit. Oh, constantly I I meant over, ring. <laughs> constantly over this vessel on this planetoid. I'll point it out. But it is very far away. But you can see it now. The well wall is still there. Okay. So we can come back that way at least. Order or leave. Be more prepared way. coming back. So I don't know. We can maybe all breathe. Yeah, that part kind of sucked. Yeah. Speaking of which, I'm starting to have a hard time breathing. Let's fill up what we can with um, some air just in case so we have it for later. I assume and you did that in the dome before the dome collapsed or okay. before you guys went to bed. So okay. you guys are fine with that, yeah. Um, you have much thicker air than the air that's here. I'm oh, uh, leaving Eliezer again. One life isn't worth three. Uh, I trust your judgment. Twig, can you talk to Eliezer? Just in the hologram, just a blank line with that blinking like cursor. What what should we tell him? We're we're not leaving, we're coming back. We have stay tight. Yeah. Something like that. It works. We don't want we don't want to, but the there's keep a Keep it light, keep it tight. <laughs> <laughs> Name of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah. Thank you too. Yeah. That. So yeah, so yeah, the keyboard pops up and you're still able to read, so you can uh, p- type it in in that language. So yes, yeah, so I'll type in all that. Just like we are not leaving you behind. We will be back for you. Thank you for everything. We we have not forgotten you. We will be back. You got it. Um, it looks like this is something as you enter it and it starts to think and send. The kind of read receipt you get is this. This is something that's going to be sent to. The let the white flame protect you. Uh, yeah, and that. Sure, you got it. <laughs> this is something hi. that's going to be read slash shown to the occupant of the pod once they awaken. Ask the computer and celestial. What what time is remaining on the countdown? And then I'll do it again, so that we understand the time difference in our sense of time. Interesting. Percent. Interesting. Ooh, I That's like that. I yeah. <laughs> when talking about the time down, I'm like, yeah. oh, we can do this. If you do it again. Yeah, do it like one minute or our minute later or something or six seconds ah, like or whatever. You ask Google how much time is on the timer and then you ask it again so you can understand their increments of Yeah, units. it's just a... Interesting. Brilliant. Nice job. You deserve <laughs> an inspiration. Sure. I'm not <laughs> going to... I'm not going to role play what it says to you because yeah. what it actually says to you doesn't wouldn't mean anything as a bunch of beeps and... Sure. Time remaining on the d- 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 arc countdown and it just lets you know some number that you have no idea what it means. Mm-hmm. But you do speak celestial, so it means something, but without context, it's very strange. I think you're going to have to do this a couple times over, over a couple of minutes, just because it, it's, you, you need more data, because it's still, even the numbers are referential. Yeah. yeah. Even okay. the, the numbers actually reference... Uh, the amount of time that certain events took in the past 
And that's how, just similarly to how the railroad tracks that we have used on Earth today is an arbitrary number. The distance between the two railroads is an arbitrary number that just happened to be the distance of mo how most of the cartwheels made ruts into the roads just because people made the carts. It's super, super arbitrary, too. It's like something like, thir I don't know, 34 inches and three quarters plus a fifth or something. It's, doesn't, it's not uniform at all. It's some weird, weird number. And... So that type of thing, it's super, super referential. So you're going to have to do this quite a few times, but you can do this quite a few times over the course of 10 minutes. You just do it over and over and over and over yeah. and over and it responds. And it doesn't get sick of your quarries. It just continues to respond. I would say, go ahead and roll an intelligence check for me. Uh, and I'll give you advantage on this because this was brilliant. Nat 20. Nat 20, 25. Uh, you're able to fully understand how the numbers work. You wouldn't be able to read them if they were in front of you just mm -hmm. because the text is still not understandable. But if it was spoken to you because you're only hearing it auditorily, you're not seeing it script-wise, mm -hmm. you would be able to understand and uh, infer their units of measurement as far as numerical values. And what that means in R. Yes. You get, uh, as far as you understand it, one month, two weeks, three days, seven hours, 17 minutes, and 39 seconds. One month, two weeks, seven, three days, 17 hours. Seven hours. Seven hours. One thinking. month, two weeks, three days, seven hours, uh, 17 minutes. If I remember correctly, and 39 seconds. Not that the seconds matter, but seconds always matter. <laughs> Every second counts. Yep. Okay, so we have some time. Speaking of which, that today one. is the seventh of Akiel. If we're yes, if we're keeping track of that because of the long rest. Yes. And I imagine this. We're about like at the very earliest noon on the 7th of Akiel, granted with how much shit that happened and how late we started the other one. Mm -hmm. When's our next start? Next ninth. All right, so what are you doing? All right, so we have some time. So Maria Eliezer, or not goodbye, but just for just now. Until next time. Yeah, I hate leaving him behind. Enough. We can't. We don't have enough resources to get, like. I guess we can ask where one of these pods are, try to see if we can navigate it, do something, if you. Well, you said the emergency exits this way. Yeah, so I guess we can do that, and if you can still read we it a little bit more. computer to guide us there. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, can we tell where it would send us? I. That's what I definitely want to ask, for sure. So, would. That would probably help. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What if we're able to navigate it ourselves somehow? Uh, yeah, because we know where we are and how to navigate the stars <laughs> wherever the heck we are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can, yeah, no, it's not that easy. Uh, you can do it. I mean, if you get this all, anyway, I'll, I won't go into one of my rants, but. Um, we, we, we're just going to ask Twig. I mean, I just. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Okay, so combining, asking Twig, asking the ship's computer, basically how long, like where will it go, the, these pods, and um, if we're able to control it, that sort of thing. You're gonna ask the computer what is inferred by this emergency evacuation? Yeah, and is that what we're you're asking? more like the pods themselves for personnel to go into, and lifeboats basically, like our, are these pre-programmed destinations? What is happening with... Where are they setting us? Yeah. Via the emergency evacuation? That's your question? I need to know what your question is. My, my question is, are the pod, the lifeboat pods pre-programmed to go to a particular destination, or are we able to manually control them? Uh, you hear back... Quarry invalid. Define life like pods. The pods part of the evacuation protocol? 
evac evacuation pro pro protocol. A a a a a a does not include pop. Does include pop. Evacuation protocol initiated. As you see the, uh, as Twig has kind of crawled up to the script and just kind of like starts poking at the text and you see the wall just kind of very Star Wars style kind of come up and there is, appears to be some sort of small hallway that leads into what looks like a very cramped sitting area with small circular windows throughout. Okay. How did we miss that? Are we sure we want to step in there yet? No, not yet. Oh. Can The computer or this disembodied voice that you've been speaking to is becoming more and more disjointed uh, as who knows how old this thing is and who knows what is happening to it. And like this whole yellow red alert thing has not subsided. It's not like root, root, there's no like sirens, but it's still of that dim type of lighting. It's not, nothing's, it's not working the way it's supposed to and it knows it. So did the, uh, did our ears pop or anything from the air in this room? Was it uh, sealed off? Or when it uh, opens I up? I would say there was partial off gas. I'm not sure okay. if your ears popped, but I would say there probably was partial off gas, almost as if this this sitting area was a little bit more pressurized than the current one that you were sitting in. More air in there. there. We, we need to know where it's going first. Right. Or we travel back through, we know, you know, kind of at least the, the way to get it back through that well wall. So what are you doing? Through the pod, you mean? Right, and what if we can't make it to the wall wall? I can't lose another person. Yeah. Twig, do you know where these pods are going? Boop, beep. There's like a bit of a star map that kind of shows up. A system map. A solar system map. Mm -hmm. You see the star in the center, the sun, you see a couple, you see uh, there is one large rock and three large other rocks that appear to be moving around in, um, in odd places of this, uh, of this uh, planet, I guess the camera begins to zoom in on the larger of the, or the largest of the three smaller, what appears to be possibly moons orbiting this large rock that just boom, 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 as you see some sort of almost Tron-like scaffold neon representation of this vessel that you're in, very, very far off and small and tiny upon the surface of this. And then you see and a dotted line that goes to the larger rock that all three of these smaller moons seem to be orbiting. I have seen the planet from orbit. You have. Does it um this does, is does not this representation super look clear like? satellite images. This is like more far more skeleton bones, holographic, just abstract representations of these things because it's not that advanced of a hologram. But we also know that our planet has three moons. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. The UK guys can we absolutely can infer. infer that this thing is whatever this evacuation protocol is. Uh, oh, some text pops up. It, it, it just says nearest Goldilocks planet. Who the fuck is Goldilocks? Uh, Where did that come from? Uh, I've heard a random story about a, a little girl that seems to really like Borge a certain way, but... Uh, One of the things you it also... It comes from the north. It is actually set out... <laughs> 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 I rolled a 19. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in this sure, sure. Um, it's the old tale of Goldilocks. <laughs> uh, 
what's also interesting that you see is that this solar system or whatever, you don't know that's what it's called, uh, zoomed out. This is the only <laughs> planet in the solar system, as far as meta knowledge is that what you can understand. And, and it has three moons. Interesting. Wait, so, so the big bright thing doesn't revolve around us? No. Obviously. Can't you see the map? Well, yeah, but it's the first time I've seen it. It's the first time any of you have seen it. No, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm just saying, obviously. Well, it's news to me. Oh, yeah. Too. <laughs> obviously, fire <laughs> is the most important. Right. Uh, obviously, we all rotate around fire. So what are you guys doing? Fire is the root of life. <laughs> all right, so... So it seems... I mean... I'd say we go in the pod. Yeah, let's squeeze in there and so get... So it goes to these rocks? It goes to home. Home is a rock. Oh, I'll walk into the pod. Wait, 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 it all of us. It doesn't necessarily go to paradise. Yeah. Mecca walks into the pod, sits down. Nothing happens. Okay. Do we, um, and then we get Zemdak back as soon as we get back to. Yeah. Okay. We have to find out if we can. Maybe we can do that while we're traveling? <laughs> I mean. Sure. Especially if Log's doing it. Yeah. I got nothing else to do. A little, okay. All right, let's go. All right. I'm sorry, Eleazar. We'll be back. Maybe. No, we will. You all sally into the pod and sit down, <laughs> and there's silence <laughs> as nothing happens before. Um, there's a boop, boop, boop uh, from Twig and from the disembodied sound. There, an iris opens up in the middle among all of you as you're all kind of like huddled together in this small area with small windows around you, kind of like an orb. And some sort of pedestal comes up and it's a bit of a sepulcher. Uh, a, a, a kind of like a bowl and not like a pedestal. That also kind of has a bit of a lant, almost like a slant, like a lectern, you're not quite sure. Uh, and within it is some sort of like glittery gel the same kind of goo that we've been seeing. Yes. Okay. I mean, I can more food. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no, no, no. I don't think it's that. You're no. like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Do you want to do the honors, or do you? It's like the new to? puppy. Yeah. <laughs> I can try. Okay. I'll stick my finger in it. Do you have stuff in you? Yeah. You've had twenty. Yeah, yeah, that's right. For a while, yeah. So. yeah. Uh, you stick your finger in it. Uh, it hurts like hell. You feel like it's going under your fingernails and pulling blood out from the porous uh, oh poor baby a little pain context <laughs> of your epidermis is this like, how it felt for you all the pressure just yeah. pulling out kind of like Magneto pulling out mercury from that one uh, yeah, police not... officer in that one scene as he's pulling all the metal out of his blood no <laughs> that's what it feels like it hurts like hell uh, but it does seem to register you see uh, show up on some sort of mu holographic mu finder, uh, some sort of double helix, like DNA, as far as meta knowledge. And I don't think any of the, you, uh, the, you don't have your sister's information anymore, so you don't recognize this either. Some type of double helix, again, meta knowledge, probably some sort of strand of DNA that it begins to examine and pull pieces out of, as it seems to, as the very last bit of your knowledge of the script begins to wane examining your DNA for what you can, what is considered for the occupants of this escape pod to be a Goldilocks planet. And the map comes up again, uh, selects Bonteria as far as you can tell, and the door bulkhead closes. You hear some rumbling as some things begin to spin up. There is a large uh, you feel the thing begin to move. It's moved by some sort of mechanical entity. And there should be a large panel that opens up as you can now see the starry sky or space within the windows as you appear to be hanging outside of, protruding outside of the vessel. And there is a jolt as you begin to move. And the artificial gravity stops as you all begin to float. The straps that you were sitting on before recognize AI style that you didn't strap yourself in and 
strap you in and pull you tight to it because this thing is very, very smart. It thinks of everything. And a bunch of pieces of it are air-gapped. You are now tethered to each of the seats, super crowded in here as you just feel to be floating through space. Through the windows, you see something go on all sides of you, some sort of circle or ring appear to go on all sides of you as you see a small, spinning, silvery, but also kind of stone-like and metal-like ring. It's moving too fast, but you feel like it might be glowing, but maybe there's some script on it. You're not quite sure as it begins to almost shoot out like a bubble net from a whale and go around you like a smoke ring and appears to be fleeting and ephemeral for a moment as it spins. And this small portal appears before you and there is a jarring jolt as you are shoved through this portal. And in a moment, you are only thousands of feet from the from the surface of the Earth, like Vontir, of a planet that has life that you're familiar with. Clouds, plants, something. Uh, I need to know... You and... Who has nanites here? Just you two? Mm -hmm. Okay. It da examines your DNA and it in part because it was initialized, already has your DNA and knows who you are, examines your DNA. Uh, you see, you are able to see the Rubicon Plateau from above you. You're also able to see the Maw as well. It looks like you're aiming from a spot that is kind of equidistant between the two of them. As it has examined your DNA, figured out what the environment is best for both of you and has split the difference. Okay. Uh, so technically you are landing within the southern part of the Maw as far as you can tell. Okay. Uh, especially from this overhead, bird's eye view look, it's not difficult to tell, especially since you've seen this type of overhead look before, overhead vantage point before. I will say trying to pinpoint your exact location will take a little bit more effort. I do need all of you to roll strength saving throws as the Gs that you feel while this is happening are enormous. Well, I was gonna ask if it's as we're falling, possible to steer it so we get closer to the monster. There doesn't appear to be any type of steering mechanism whatsoever. It is under its own. It appears like like it tele it gave you a burst of propulsion, teleported you into the atmosphere, and is letting gravity take care of the rest. Almost as if uh, kinetic propulsion is far too inefficient. Sorry, wait, was this a check or a save? This is a save, a strength okay. save. I, I rolled disadvantage. I'm no longer disadvantaged on that, so let me reroll. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Little wins. Right. This is like trying to push yourself up against the roller coaster seat so you don't go. Ten. Ten? Ten? Did you get? Uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Four. Four. And eleven. Eleven. Okay. I'm stronger than most of you. But that makes sense if you only have one arm. <laughs> I only yeah, have one arm. That, that's only gonna hurt. I'm still two points it's... of exhaustion, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those who did not save take twenty-four points of bludgeoning damage as their head and their body bangs up against this. Those who did save, uh, which is uh, the DC is fourteen, by the way. So everybody but Trisheni fails, unfortunately. Ooh, how much was it? 20? 24 total, you take 12, Trisheni, okay. as you bang up against this, as the G-forces are enormous. I need you to roll one last one as you appear to make contact with the sand of the Maw. This is another strength save? Another strength save, yes. That's more like it. <laughs> Even worse. Same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm more apt to make this a strength save because it's you trying to put yourself in a, in a position where you could brace yourself rather than it be a con save. And strength saves are never used often enough. Okay. Uh, I still only got an 11. 11. Fail. Eight. Fail. Eight. Fail. Five. Eight. Fail. <laughs> okay. And I, I did roll for the other thing that I'm supposed to, and I'm fine. Okay. Okay, you got God, it. Though. <laughs> yeah. In closed space. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I rolled absolutely terrible, so all of you only take eight points of damage. Uh, this thing does implement some sort of kinetic countermeasure, uh, inertial dampener countermeasures, as it appears to push another smoke ring only 
it's it's weird. This ephemeral. It kind of looks like a spinning well wall, but much thinner and and it's more surrounded and cylindrical in a in a circle, like a bubble that spins super fast and super ephemeral. That's super fleeting. That does teleport you much closer to it, but also gets rid of a bunch of your inertia as it does so, rather than it being some sort of cushion that it lands on. It uses teleportation technology to take care of that stuff as it's far apparently more efficient as these people seem to have mastered it and they are very proud of it uh, and only uses kinetic when absolutely necessary so it does take a lot of the inertia off hence the low amount of damage that you all receive seven points of damage additionally it does crash into the sand there is some sort of green style text that pops up for uh, for a moment before the thing begins to power down. And there is a last bit of movement from similarly where you would find the bathroom in an airplane near the exit of the door where there is that still like wall before it becomes the seats. Mm -hmm. uh, a panel opens, these arms come out and there is a pod. Similar to the, pod, the pods that you've seen before filled with the fluid uh, or, yeah, filled with the fluid that is, seems to be operational, has blue light in it with one of the entities within it. That just is there before everything shuts down and the, the, there's this spin up sound of this circle that seems to fill up like a stamina wheel <laughs> in a video game before like letting you know that something is about to happen before the door of this poof, jettisons off. And you feel the hot, warm air of the noon desert sun enter. So when you say- Spray of, of fine sand enter the vessel. So when you say entity, one of those, the big construct things that was central? No, 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 much or like... the bipedal, okay. the humanoid ones, the ones that you have inhabited before. All right. They all appear to be the same. One of these is within this pod. Uh, the straps that are holding you retract, and you have your own agency. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> you rush I am out, out and like collapse into the sand yeah. as you grab the sand. There doesn't appear to be anything as far as you can see. Um, actually, it's a very good point. Uh, but please do what it is you're going to do before I make you. Oh no, this. I'm just you out into the sand. What are the rest of you doing? Well, that fucking sucked. Yeah, but we're back. Um, yeah. So, so, so you know when we were falling? Yeah. That's what it looks like when I was in Twig before. It looked like that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, we need to get into some shelter. It's way too hot out for yeah. most of you. So. <laughs> I'm in the sand. Just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's um, warm. You guys want to roll perception checks as you pop out of this to get yeah. your bearings? Yeah. And. Um, I'll pull out Cole's cane and figure out if he's north. Sure, easily enough. Uh, what'd you guys get? Fifteen. 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 Eight. <laughs> Disadvantage. Okay, eight, fifteen, fifteen. What'd you get? 15. 15. Oh, three 15s. Yeah. Three 15s. No, I got a 12. A 12. Yeah. Okay, uh, Argus, and as you find out which way is north, you pull out one of the maps that you have, uh, and Mechel, you find out which place. You've never been outside, mm -hmm. as far as you remember, outside of the borough. Uh, so you don't know which way is which. No, but this is a lot better than the last place that we ended up at. Agreed. You are able... To, you do see something off in the distance and you think you're able to kind of line it up with what it's going on. There's a large spire and it kind of becomes similar to what's in Karadim, but much more sandblasted limestone. It's very, very, very far off, but it is very tall and large, which is why you see it from here. The best you can determine by looking at it, actually roll survival check at advantage. Uh, 16. 16, the best you can determine that could possibly be Fort Yeda in a western direction, perhaps perhaps a mile or two in that direction, perhaps more. 
You're not sure. But in the noon, midday desert sun, that's a long way off. That could be Fort Yeda. Mm-hmm. I'm showing the map. Dude, that was just another one over there. That's all for this episode of Crestfall and the Argent Flame. Tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Dice of Ages. And as always, stay safe out there. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.